But I'm not afraid. I like the war. I like the chaos. I've always said bare knuckle was the most realist, most rawest form of fighting. After I want to have a better fight, I want the best. In a world where luck often dictates success, tonight at the River Creek Casino, fate takes a back seat. Here in the realm of BKFC prospects, fortune favors not the fortunate, but the fearless. Some familiar faces and some new blood, all poised to rewrite their destinies with nothing but grit, skill, toughness, and an unyielding determination to seize their moment in the spotlight. Tonight, BKFC makes its historic debut in Canada, live from the city of champions, Edmonton, inside the illustrious River Creek Casino. It's BKFC Prospects. The future is here, and it all starts right now. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is presented by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Welcome to Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, Canada's festival city, where tonight marks the first of no doubt many BKFC events on Canadian soil and no better spot than the fabulous River Creek Casino and Resort. Is there any better motivation than fighting for a job, a spot on the BKFC roster? That's the case for many of these hard-nosed prospects ready to show the world and David Feldman that they are ready. Don't blink. Expect big finishes. In tonight's explosive co-main event is the debut of Vancouver's undefeated bare-knuckle badass Sonny Smith, matching up with the always electric Jeremiah Riggs, who's on a mission to return to the title picture. And how about this main event? Two battle-tested flyweights in the inspirational underdog Gabrielle Roman and Canada's bare-knuckle queen, John Masson Wong. No doubt, a golden opportunity could be up for grabs. And welcome to the fabulous River Cree Casino and Resort right here in Edmonton, Alberta. I'm Cyrus Fees, and you are locked in for the BKFC Prospect Series as we make our debut in the country of Canada. What a night it is going to be as we see these fighters look to get a spot on the BKFC roster. And for these fighters, it all started at the tryouts where Chris lights out Lytle and our matchmaker Nate Shook evaluated these fighters, seeing if they can make it to the prospect series. And once they do, of course, this is where we really find out if they have got the skill, the speed, the grit to be a BKFC athlete. We'll see if they can get it done tonight and see how many of them can advance. And folks, as you know, the 2024 campaign is in full effect right now. We're going to be March 15th in Miami, March 29th in Albuquerque. But of course, all eyes and everybody is thinking about Knuckle Mania 4 and why not? Big announcements were made last week by David Feldman talking about this card. On top of the card, the King of Violence, Mike Perry, taking on undefeated former BKFC champion, Tiago Alves. If you know about these fighters, you know this is going to be a war that you will not forget. Also on the card, Big Ben Rothwell taking on Todd Duffy. We were supposed to get it in December. We are going to get it at Knuckle Mania 4 and also announced our champion, our heavyweight champion, Mick Terrell from the UK, taking on Lorenzo Hunt, who is our pound for pound king. He's given up two titles to fight for that heavyweight championship. So much to be excited about. Even heard that Bryce Hall's gonna be on that one, making his return to the BKFC. That is Knuckle Mania 4, April 27th in Los Angeles. But let's get down to why we are here. Let's walk our first fighters and let's send it down ringside to Sean Wheelock and Chris Lytle. Thank you, Cyrus. Tonight, of course, Chris, Canada becomes nation number six to host BKFC. 13 Canadians on this card. Sean, I was at the tryout, so happy to be here. I've noticed there's a lot of great fighters in this country. George St. Pierre, one of the best 
ever to do it in MMA. Arturo Gatti, one of my favorite boxers. I can see when I was there, when I was doing the trials, these people are proud of their fight history. They come to fight, tough, hard nose. I love every second of being here. These are gonna be some great fights. Chris, our main event in the women's 125 pound division, the French Canadian Jade Masson Wong versus the American Gabriel Roman. And these two ladies come to fight. Jade's come and put in some great displays of hard power coming in there. And she's so happy. She's always got a smile on her face. She loves being out here. You gotta like that. Gabrielle came in a couple of times as an underdog, undersized, but just comes to fight, puts on a show. It's going to be a great fight, too. Your keys to victory for both main event fighters are presented by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Okay, Gabrielle Roman, what she has to do, she has to control the fight, when, where it happens. She doesn't want to fight her opponent's game. She wants to dictate, move, get out of the way. She doesn't want to trade power. She has to use that in and out attack motion. She can't stand in front, but she does a great job when she picks her shots, lands hard shots, gets out of the way, and she has to use that lateral movement side to side. Like I said, her opponent's very big, very strong, very powerful, doesn't want to stand right in front and trade. When it comes to, look at that smile right there, Jan Masan Wong. She has to apply constant pressure, come forward the entire time. She cannot let her opponent use that motion, that lateral motion I talked about. She wants to cut off the ring, mirror her opponent's hips. Every time Gabriel moves right, she's got to move that way. Every time she moves up, just keep following those hips. And she's got to use that power. Bam, look at that right hand. When she gets in and lands power, she feels like she's the hardest hitter in this division. She's got to get in that position and land that powerful shot. BKFC uses the unified rules of bare knuckle fighting. All bouts are scheduled for five two minute rounds and are scored by three judges on the 10 point must system. Punching in the active clinch is allowed. All kicks, knees, and elbows are illegal, as are all takedowns and submissions. We open tonight here in Alberta with a bout in the welterweight division. Adam DeFreitas versus Matt Sukalukchuk. Our tale of the tape is presented by Fucked Up Energy Drink. And Sean, you can see there's a slight height difference. Not much in anything else. Sukalukchuk does have his hands a little bit bigger. Let's see if that can make any difference. Very similar on tale of the tape as far as reach goes. From Montreal, Quebec, Max Sukalukchuk set for his BKFC debut. Sukalukchuk has had five pro MMA fights. He played college football in his native Canada at the University of Waterloo, where he was a running back, and he weighed 265 pounds. And Sean Mount tells me he's athletic right there, but you know, a lot of those guys, they have a lot of power, and they can translate that to the lighter weight class. He said he likes to be extremely aggressive out there, wants to be a pocket fighter with a lot of high volume. Sukaluk Chuck also told us in our fighter meeting, I want to use excellent timing on my jab for the entries. I'm going to move before, during, and after I throw punches. Well, he wants to really target the body right here, but the thing that really showed me is stuff is he wants to control the pace of the fight. Of his opponent in this bout, Adam DeFreitas, Sukaluk Chuck said, I think DeFreitas is going to try to establish the reach advantage and then counter punch from range. I cannot let him stay on the outside. And Sean, I just love saying this guy's name. Suck a luck, Chuck. I'm going to say it all night. From Mississauga, Ontario, just outside of Toronto, Adam DeFreitas. This is his BKFC debut. DeFreitas has had five pro MMA bouts. He holds the rank of black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. DeFreitas said, I'm going to use my grappling. I'm comfortable on the inside. That will not be an issue. However, DeFreitas said, I feel that I'm most effective with my outside striking. That's what I want to implement is plan A in this fight. I love something he said. He wants to be a stalky counter fight. That means he gets in position, makes his opponent throw punches, and then he counters. And what he wants to do, he wants to get out there with some pressure and then throw a lot of tech hooks as his opponent comes forward. DeFreitas is naturally right-handed. He told us, I mainly fight in the southpaw position. I will occasionally switch stances, but I like having my power hand forward. And with that, as a natural right-hander fighting lefty, I want to be extremely accurate with my lead power hand. Talking about that accuracy, he describes himself as a sniper. He wants to target these punches, put them in the right place. Our opening BKFC 
What's the event in this great nation of Canada to get us started? Jeff Houston. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome one and all to the River Cree Resort and Casino and welcome to the ultimate proving ground. This is BKFC Prospect Series Canada. We are set for our opening fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Presented to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Get bucked up. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears black. He stands five feet nine inches tall. His official weight, 169 and one half pounds. His MMA record stands at five fights and tonight he makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Here is Matthew Sagalancha. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and white. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, 170.3 pounds. His MMA record also stands at five fights. And tonight, he also makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Here is Adam Clooney. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Adam DeFreitas told us, I know back sucker luck, Chuck. My opponent wants to get to the inside. I have to land my check hooks as he comes forward. Sporting touch of hands. Both fighters up to scratch. Round number one. Black and white trunks for Adam DeFreitas. Sell the black trunks for Matt sucker luck, Chuck. On the outside, DeFreitas. Now exactly where he wants to be. Trying to come to the inside where he wants to be, Sakalak Chuck. Couldn't do so with that overhand left. Long jab from DeFreitas. DeFreitas on the one, two. You can see that DeFreitas wants to use that powerful lead hand. Sakalak Chuck already cut above his left brow. But just it stands for DeFreitas. And the natural right-hander in his favorite southpaw stance. To the inside, right, right. ripping Yuck off of the Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt to Freitas. Gets the separation from referee Andrew Glenn. Blood flowing freely now on the face of Sakalakchuk. Good left hand on the step in from De Freitas. High striking guard now defensively for Sakalakchuk then turning over the left hand. Sakalakchuk to the inside counter right hand from De Freitas. Clinch in the turn right. by DeFreitas. I feel like Sakalakchuk's really feeling a sense of urgency right here with that cut. He took a couple hard shots right there, too. 40 seconds remaining, round number one of this middleweight bout. DeFreitas seems really poised, really in control right now. On his back foot is Matt Sakalakchuk, looking to explode in time his entry. And Sean, these guys are just standing very close to each other. Circling out, Sakalakchuk. DeFreitas trying to mirror the hips. From the center circle, long on the jab. See Sukalukchuk trying to time the entry, backing off. Left hook off the mark from DeFredos, but it took Sukalukchuk off his striking line. Closing seconds, round number one. There is the bell. And Sean, we usually don't see Two combatants sitting that close together without pulling the trigger. They're waiting right there, just waiting to counter each other. This is you can tell, a chess match going on right now. You see, Pat McPherson has his work cut out for him right there. That's a nasty cut. Here's a little bit of the good action. There was a good right hand, followed by another good right hand by the Freitas. Oh, 
You, can, you, you can tell the strength he's right there of the Fred Astaire. They get tied up, and he's doing good from the outside, but you know, him being a great jiu-jitsu practitioner, Black Belt, you think he might want to get inside and use that tie clinch and throw some hard shots in there. Mouthpiece check from referee Ooh, Glenn as he starts round number two. Charlie Ford off from scratch comes back, so a lot chucked up in the second round. Turner on the left hand from DeFreitas. DeFreitas hands are looking very accurate right now. Short check left hook lands from DeFreitas. DeFreitas to the body. Suckle lock chuck on the one two. Counter one two right back from DeFreitas. Fighters really committing to their punches as Sukaluk Chuck did there. There's the overhook from DeFreitas. Probably one of the best punches right, right there that Sukaluk Chuck has landed. The fighters they seem to like shrug it off like nothing. 80 seconds remaining round two. Well, I like and nearly getting through from Sukaluk Chuck. The left hook gets through. And there's the difference in power right there, Sean. Sukaluk Chuck landed the punch, did nothing. The fighters left counter. Seven. Wow. Sukalakcha taking the mandatory eight count from Andrew Glenn. We will continue here in round two. I like that right hand lead that Sukalakcha has landed, but man, it just didn't do any damage. There's the big step in right hand from Sukalakcha. The friend has took it exceedingly well. I mean, you gotta like what Sukalakcha. He's coming right back after getting knocked down. He's not afraid, but man, it, it just does no damage at all. Not a cut. Not a wobble. Anything. The jab from Matt Sukaluk Chuck. Down here in round number one on that beautifully timed rear left hand, just like that on cue from Adam DeFreitas. I like what Sukaluk Chuck's trying to do right now. A few more feints. He's got to get his opponent reacting so he can land some hard shots. You're seeing that left hand again. That's the punch here in round two that drops Sukaluk Chuck. Now 15 seconds remaining round two. Heavy feint from Sukaluk Chuck. DeFreitas on his back foot. Freitas on the left hand again. That is fast, Chris. On the roll under the bell, we move to round three. And, and Sukalokcha, like I said, he's got this very good right hand, just a right hand lead. You can't throw that too many times. But he's landed it when he is, but he's got to come back with some left hooks afterwards. That right hand is doing a good job, but it's not going to knock his opponent down. He's too big and strong. Did you hear that? Just a, 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 just a thud. That's a hard shot when it's a thud, Sean. Great left hand. That was just a count. He had just gotten hit. Okay, my turn. I'm going to leave him. He got hit with the lead right hand. He just came with his lead left hand. Light up with this little one. Make it lead punch. Sometimes people don't see that coming. They're waiting for that jab to come. And it's almost like a change up in baseball. You don't think the pitch that straight left or the straight right is coming. So round number three we go. Hard on the entry. Met comes Matt Sukalakchuk. There's the overhook again from DeFreitas. He's used that well defensively to create space. As he did there on Q. Then the one two from DeFreitas. Freitas left to the body. Almost a bolo punch. Freitas now cut corner of his right eye. And you can just see, look at the Freitas just waiting to throw that left hand. Oh, that's a good cut he has on his lip, too. One a piece, John. Somebody's getting up off the canvas to win this one. I love it. Let's see if... Oh. There's that overhook again with the right hand on the separation. Right, right. Step back, let him go. Over the head draws the separation from referee Andrew Glenn. Both fighters in the center circle. Big left hand from DeFreitas. Active lead hand from Sakalacha. In oh. the next position, and knocked down number two. Oh. He's hurt, Sean. He's hurt. Six. Seven. That's it. Whoa. 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 And the cut from behind win for Matt Sukalacha. That went totally against the full of fight, Sean. The front end seemed to be in the driver's seat in control, but that's, that's bare knuckle. It just takes one shot, as you see right there. 
man, what a great fight. And I, that was just fantastic for Sal Kulubchuk. He was dealing with adversity the entire fight. Cut from the beginning, got knocked down. I mean, that was, that was a great fight. BKFC Prospects Edmonton live tonight from the sold out River Cree Resort and Casino is presented commercial free by Bucked Up Energy Drink. So that's exactly the kind of fight we want to see at the beginning. Both guys scoring knockdowns. Somebody had to get up off the canvas to win. My favorite thing to happen in this sport, first fight, check, we got it done. Both fighters had their moments. Defreitas dropping Sukalukchuk. And Sukalukchuk, two knockdowns in the third round to the knockout. And here you can see that very first knockdown, just a nice right hand that slipped through. Still a little hurt, still a little wobbly. Just a, just a little punch that got through, did the damage. Almost get a delayed reaction, Chris. Well, you think that the Freddies was still a little hurt from the, the first knockdown. That one, not quite as clean, but did, did enough damage to get the knockdown. Huh. All it takes is a little shot in here. Doesn't have to be hard, doesn't have to be perfect. It's all about placement. You hit a person in the right spot, it's fantastic. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andy Glenn, steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 1 minute 13 seconds into round number three. For your winner by TKO, Matthew Sagalancha. And Sean, sometimes we talk about the great fighters here. You have to be a dog. You don't know if they have that in him. We know for sure Sucker Luck Chuck has that in him. He got up off the canvas, dealt with a lot of problems the entire fight until he found his time to shine, and he did it. Both Adam DeFreitas and Matt Sucker Luck Chuck did very well in this, the respective BKFC debut. Sucker Luck Chuck off the canvas to drop DeFreitas twice in round number three. The winner by way of third round knockout, Matt Sukalukchuk defeats Adam DeFreitas. John the Magician Dodson! Division we go. Our tale of the tape is presented by Fubo TV for Robert DeArnay versus Desmond Johnson. And Sean, these guys are almost identical. Both six foot tall, one inch reach different, same fist size, everything very similar on the tail of the tape right here. Desmond Johnson set for his BKFC debut. He has had 13 pro MMA bouts, six in pro boxing. In our fighter meeting, Johnson told us, I want to work to the inside and brawl. My game is all about coming forward and continually throwing punches. One thing I like, we asked him about his opponent. He said he knows nothing about his opponent, doesn't want to know anything about his opponent. He wants to do what he does best, get inside and turn this into a brawl. Johnson also told us, I'm going to open up and take chances to record the knockout. I'm not playing anything safe. I cannot let my opponent, Robert DeArnay, dictate the pressure and the pace. That has to be my role. Has to use good movement out there. One thing he said he wants to do, wait to see what his opponent does, then react to what his opponent does. If he's being aggressive, he wants to counter. If he's not countering, then he wants to get in there and be aggressive himself.
This is the BKFC and Pro Combat Sports debut for Robert Dayarnay. He has had one Ami MMA bout. Dayarnay told us in our fighter meeting his main focus in training for this bout has been picking the correct punches. Dayarnay said, I want to be aggressive, but I know I'm watching a lot of BKFC. I cannot be careless. Wants to be a sniper out there. He has to set the pace. One thing I found interesting, he's been watching. He said one thing he's not going to do, he's not going to take any steps backwards. Darren A also told us, I believe that my opponent Desmond Johnson leaves his body wide open. He has a good job. I think he'll try to stay long behind that jab. I've got to get underneath that jab, target the body, Whoa! turn up the pressure. Kind of the opposite strategy a lot of guys. He wants to start inside early, then as the fight moves on, he wants to get long. A lot of people fight the opposite way. We'll see how it works. Again, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, and fight fans of Edmonton, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Presented to you by Fubo TV. Watch live sports and TV without cable, including BKFC on Fubo TV. Start your seven-day free trial at FuboTV.com. Introducing to you first. Fighting out of the red corner, tonight he wears black and white trimmed in red. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, 139.9 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of 27 fights, and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, here is Desmond Johnson. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears red and blue. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, 142.6 pounds. Tonight, he makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Here is Robert the Slim Reaper. And our referee in charge of the action, Andy Social. Robert Dayarnay said, I have to get inside, I have to push forward, I have to put Desmond Johnson's back against the ropes. Now go up! Right the wall! Oh. Scratch counter left hand, and that drops Robert Dayarnay. Right away, Sean. They came at it. Jackson landed a huge punch right there. Let's see how hurt Dayarnay is. Mandatory eight from referee Andy Social, right back to it. Big uppercut, half-time punt from Darren Day. He's throwing big as well. And one knockdown a piece, left hook to the body, landed flush. I don't know if he's getting up. Nope. The count of eight is broken off, and the win in his BKFC debut, round number one for Robert Darren Day. Well, Sean, that's two fights right there, Get and we've had both. Guys knocked down in each fight. That's fucking gold. We always talking about loving that. I mean, where are the odds? Two for two so far. That's a dog right there. That's a Watch this beginning. Just hard punches being thrown and landed right from the beginning. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Made a little punch at the end. Fuck. Spit in my fucking mouth. There's that punch again, just the right hand, but then this inside, we talked about this tie. Plum the inside fighting right there. That's all it takes. Sometimes it's one little shot. If you don't see it coming, those are the ones that hurt. And, and he pulled the head down in the way that Johnson was not able to see that hit him in the chin. Fight's over. Sean, that fight didn't last long, but there was a lot of action in that little period. Oh, that was the plan. Chris, I met Robert Dayarnay at the Kansas City tryouts in August 2020. He drove to suburban Kansas City from his native Kansas. And here we are in March of 2024 and victory in round number one in the BKFC debut for Robert Dayarnay. We're definitely baptized by fire right there. He took a Good punch, had to get him off the canvas, pull himself together. We go to Jeff Houston. 
Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andy Social, calls a stop to this fight at the count of 10 and 34 seconds into round number one for your winner by K.O. Robert, the Slim Reaper, Dayon Nay. Get fucked up. Sean, we didn't get to see a lot of Dayon but we saw some mental toughness right there, getting rocked, getting up, and getting the finish. Wide open start off from scratch from both men. Johnson knocking down Dayarnay. And to his full credit, Dayarnay off of the canvas to drop and indeed finish Desmond Johnson. The winner by way of first round KO, Robert Dayarnay defeats Desmond Johnson. Heavyweights for you now, the numbers presented by OnlyFans for Tyler Tremblett versus DJ Tice. And you can see here, Tremblett does have a significant forest height advantage, a six and a half inch reach advantage against Tice. He's going to utilize that, make Tice pay each time he tries to get close to land those shots. Also, a pretty significant weight advantage, Sean. Looks like Tice could make 205. DJ Tice, 1-0 in the sport of bare knuckle, and now making his promotional BKFC debut. Tice is 6-2 in AMI MMA, 2-0 in amateur boxing, and he wrestled at the NAIA level at Life University. Tice told us in our fighter meeting, with his wrestling background as a collegiate, he wants to work on the inside, be heavy in the clinch. Really impressed with when he talked about his wrestling. Didn't wrestle his whole life, just in high school, and that's really impressive to me. So is he's an athlete understands what he has to do. He has to get in, pick angles, get in and out. He can't sit in the mid-range and trade. Tice also told us big shots from the half-tie club. I've got to roll under and then explode forward. Tice said, I believe that at 5'10", I'm a very agile heavyweight. I have to showcase my agility. And when he rolls under, like you talked about, he wants to work the body, hook straight, get into that body, make his opponent pay. Tice said, I cannot let my opponent, Tyler Tremblett, control with his jab from the outside. I have to use smart pacing, but that pacing has got to take me to the inside. He really talked about that low stance he has. It's very hard to deal with. He says he's going to get low and make his opponent miss, and that's when he's countering punches. Tyler Tremblant set for his bare knuckle fighting championship debut. Tremblant has had four pro boxing bouts. He told us in our fighter meeting he wants to be extremely technical with his striking. Tremblant said, I want to work smartly to the mid range, land, and then get back to the outside. In and out motion, like you talked about. Said he will utilize that clinch when needed, but not really offensive. He just wants to use it defensively because he knows that opponent's going to try and get in to do damage from that position. Of his heavyweight opponent, DJ Tice, Tyler Tremblant said he definitely has good power, but Tremblant said, I don't think Tice is overly technical. With that said, Tremblant told us, I have to be aware of the Tice overhands. I'm going to use my touch jab to get him to react and then technically his work, technically break down DJ Tice. What he wants to do, he wants to keep his back in the middle of the ring. Doesn't want to get pushed up against the rope. Keep him at the end of the jab, like you said. 
the main thing with him. He said he has to be smart about this fight. He knows what the opponent is going to try and do. He just has to stop it. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Presented to you by OnlyFans. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears camouflage. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, 217.8 pounds. His bare-knuckle fighting record stands at 1-0. And tonight, he makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Plant City, Florida, USA. Here is DJ Big Red Ties. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue quarter. Tonight, he wears black and gold. He stands six feet, three inches tall. His official weight, 238.2 pounds. He holds a pro boxing record of four fights and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Cold Lake, Alberta, Canada. Here is Tyler Big Nasty. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. DJ Ty said, I believe Tyler Tremblett will start very aggressively, but then I think he will fade very quickly. Ready? Ready, Round number one. Black and gold trunks for Tyler Tremblett. Black and multicolored trunks for DJ Tice. Hey, no you can see immediately that really low stance of Tice. Can Tice 5'10 to Tremblett 6'3? Accentuated by the level change of Tice. Break, break, break. Separation called again by Dan Bergliotta. Right back to it. Very low stance, looking to explode in DJ Tice. You, you can tell the strategy right there. Tice gets really low, and after a punch is on, he wants to explode in with hard shots. Tice was trying to end strip to get the break. Couldn't get his arms around the back of Tyler Tremblay. Gets the break there from Bergliotta. 120 remaining, round number one. Can get him very low as DJ Tice. Tremblet drops DJ Tice. Oh. Six, oh, he's seven, still hurt. Tice eight, is still hurt. Bergliotta now talking to Tice, making the assessment. Go, 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 go. Tice, Tice got to be careful. He's hurt right now. We will continue. <laughs> he better tie up as long as he has to right now. Right hand, and that's knocked down number two. All right, Tice has got to get his legs. They did a good job seven, of tying up, but eight, I think he took a shot in there. Tice telling Mergliotta he wants to continue. We will continue. Tyler Tremblay can see the finish line, trying to reach it here in round number one. Tice doing exactly what he needs. He needs to stay inside right now. He cannot stay at the end of those punches. I'd go for him to tie up right now, if at all possible. Getting low again is Tice. Left hand right in, another big overhand right. That's the third knockdown of round one. Tice has got to be careful. They might stop this fight. His legs look a little bit better than they did after that first knockdown to me, though. He's got to get through this round. The 10-second clock, final seconds, round number one. It's been one more traffic for Tyler Tremblay. The bell, we move to round two. Huge round right there for Tremblay. Let's see if Tice was accurate. He talked about Tremblay getting tired, gassing out after that initial blast. And when you knock a guy down like that several times, sometimes you, you blow your wide, you throw all those punches, all that power, and it gasses you out. That's what Tice has to be hoping for right now. Hey, you're okay. You're okay. His corner has got to get behind Tice right now. You talk him into the fact that you are going to be fine. You waste a lot of energy. You've got to move. you got to move. First knockdown. Ooh, that was like it was in the back of the head right there once again. That does a lot of damage when you get hit like that. The second one, you could tell, still hurt from that first knockdown. Got hit with a couple clean shots. To his credit, DJ Tice still in this fight, coming up to scratch to start round number two, and to his credit. Tyler Trebbett looking fantastic in round number one, recording three knockdowns. Medical timeout. 
There's the chief medical officer of BKFC, Dr. Don Mutsi. Let's see if he was able to clear the cobwebs after that first round. Dr. Mootsy uh, just asked Tyler, DJ Tice, yeah, tell me where you are, and he said, Kevin. That's the right answer. <laughs> what if he came with that? Sporting touch of hands. Round number two. Coming forward is DJ Tice and driving Tremblett back to the ring ropes. Right, no strikes, definitely. Great call received. Up, referee Dan Bergliata keeping his heavyweight fight moving. More big right hands. Getting low again is DJ Tice. Those Chris, when he gets low, Tremblett's been beautifully timing that overhand right, which directly led to two knockdowns in round one. Not only the overhand right, the uppercuts on the inside are doing a lot of damage to Tice. Tice has the perfect strategy right now. He's got to try and wear his opponent out to where he can start landing his own power shots. Tremblett coming forward, Tice to the inside, chest to chest. Again, taking Tyler right. Tremblett to the ring ropes. Side step, don't just uncover. Buckle up. 110 remaining, round number one. Hard entry again from Tice. Trying to snatch the overhook is Tremblett. Right. To the body goes DJ Tice. Buckle up. Buckle definitely putting his work in here in round number two to keep this heavyweight fight flowing. Right here. I'm not Six, sure if they're going to keep letting this seven, go on. Eight, nine. Turn around, face me. Up at nine. Up. Tice took his mouthpiece out, put it back in. Now talking to Mergliata. This fight is oh. over, and the win for Tyler Tremblay. So Let's go. When we Who's had the trials and we saw Tremblay, that's one thing I noticed. The first thing that caught our attention is how hard this guy's hit. He was moving that heavy bag with every punch. That's what made me and Nate shook go, man. This guy can hit a ton. We need to put him in here. Tremblay recording three knockdowns against DJ Tice in round one, and the knockdown to the knockout here in round two. With these hard punches being thrown right there. Even when they're not landing clean, they're doing damage. see the disappointment right now in Tice. He clearly thought he was going to come in and win this fight. Tremblett didn't get tired like he thought he would. Tyler Tremblett told us, I'm going to cleanly pick apart DJ Tice. And despite the fact that Tice had that very difficult to read roll under style, Tremblett largely cleanly picked apart DJ Tice. Did a great job right there. Like I said, that's a very difficult style to fight sometimes. When you throw those punches and he jumps up, he leaps in with those hard shots. But Tremblett, like I said, he was very calm right there, very relaxed. He just waited for the right time. He landed hard shots. He got off first. He did a great job. We talk about warrior spirit in BKFC. I know our founder, our CEO, David Feldman, loves the warrior spirit. DJ Tice pulling himself off of the canvas three times in round number one, coming up for round two. Full credit to him and full credit to the fighter from here in Alberta, Tyler Tremblett, looking phenomenal with his hard punches, the overhand rights, four knockdowns to the knockout. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Mergliata, steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 1 minute 24 seconds into round number two. For your winner, by TKO, Tyler Big Nasty Tremblett. And Sean, like I said, we picked Tremblett out of the trial for a reason. That power, every time he hit the bag, that thing shook, and that right there, exactly what he did. He came out there, landed hard shots. He looked really good in his debut. Tyler Tremblett talked a lot about being technical with his striking in our fighter meeting. Make no mistake, he was. He failed to mention his power. His power was on full display. Talk about burying the lead, Tyler Tremblett. Big power, four knockdowns to the knockout. The winner. In impressive fashion by way of second round TKO, Tyler Tremblett defeats DJ Tice.
Friday, March 22nd, the world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, finally returns to Bulgaria for BKFC 58. In the main event, Kalyan Kolev is back in the squared circle and looking to stay on the winning track. But the always ready to fight, Tony Markulev has other plans. Also, many more electrifying Bare Knuckle fights. It's Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com. Saturday, April 6th, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship returns to the UK. Live from Planet Ice, Milton Keynes with three championships up for grabs. In the main event, James Lights Out Lily hunts for his first BKFC title when he faces the undefeated Franco Tenaglia. Also, Gary Fox fights the hands of Brick John Hick for the vacant heavyweight UK championship. And Danny Christie defends his light heavyweight UK title against David one more round. All this plus more. Get tickets at BKFC.com. Tonight is our BKFC debut in Canada. We're just outside of Edmonton at River Cree Resort and Casino. Sold out for tonight's stack card. And in our main event, you will see two of the best women's 125 pounders. There's only fans giving you our exclusive look at the fighter from Quebec City, Quebec, Jean Masson Wong. She enters her fourth BKFC bout as she will face the fighter from New Jersey in the United States, Gabrielle Roman who enters this, her third BKFC bout. Gabriel Roman coming to Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship successfully through the open tryouts. A crossroads fight, a pivotal fight for these two ultra-talented women. At 125 pounds, Shad Masan Wong versus Gabriel Roman. It's BKFC Prospect Series, Edmonton. Chris, we're seeing the trial is coming through. We talked about Gabriel Roman coming through a trial. We talked about earlier Robert Descharnay. We saw him all the way back in Kansas City in the United States in the summer of 2020. You're now in charge of the Open Tryouts program. We talk about, we're not just looking for 19 and 20 year olds. We're looking for fighters in their 30s, in their 40s, from amateurs to fighters who have fought literally in boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, MMA at the highest levels. They are truly open tryouts. They're open. I'll take anybody who comes and wants to fight. That's for sure. I do love it when we have the new guys because one thing that, that tells me they don't want to be boxers. They don't want to be MMA guys. They want to be bare knuckle fighters. And I absolutely love that. But we'll take anybody who wants to come in and put on a show like we have here, Sean. You've seen with this new smaller ring we're using for these prospects has been so amazing. What have we had? We've had three fights and, and we've had nine knockdowns. We've had the first two, we had each fighter getting knocked down. The last one we had, somebody got knocked down four times. It promotes action. And what I want to see here, I want to see people who have heart. I want to see people who have will. I want to see the dogs out there. And that's what we're seeing. That's what this is all about because those people are going to be our future champions. And Chris, Collectively as an organization led by David Feldman, we made the decision at BKFC to go with the smaller ring. This is a brand new ring for the Prospect Series. We've seen it pay dividends. It made its debut two weeks ago just outside of Washington, D.C. at Manassas, Virginia. All of us, including you and I, commented the ring played a factor in the exciting fights, and we're seeing that playing out for the second time of this <laughs> ring here tonight in Canada. Sean, I got to admit, I wasn't sure when I first saw it. I thought, man, this is small. These guys going to have the ability to move. They do. You can just promote nice fights, great fights, people coming and putting on the display. That's what we want to see. With us. I want to see their heart. You can't really learn that in the trials. You don't really know. You can see if they have skill, but you can't see if they have will. That's what we're trying to find out right now. As we showed you our new BKFC ring, the smaller ring for the Prospect Series, you saw our colleague Brian Sosha. He's here at every event, getting the crowd at a fever pitch. And of course, he is our presenter for the Bare Knuckles Show every Tuesday. Note the time, 12.05 p.m., just past noon. That's U.S. Canadian Eastern Time, exclusively on the BKFC app. A very intriguing main event tonight with Jean Masson Wong versus Gabriel Roman, women's 125 pound division. Our co main, this is intriguing as well, Chris. This is in the welterweight division. Again, OnlyFans brings you our exclusive look back of the house. There is the Englishman now based in Canada, Sonny Smith. He is 2 0 in the sport of bare knuckle, making his promotional debut in BKFC tonight against one of the most popular fighters in all of bare knuckle fighting championship. 
the fighter from Vicksburg, Mississippi, Jeremiah Riggs, who will make his fourth appearance tonight at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. It is our co-main event. We roll on with BKFC in our debut here in Canada. To the lightweight division we go. Bucked Up Energy Drink brings you our numbers for Hassan al Hanaim versus Dalton Steibel. You can see here, Steibel does have a four inch height advantage, a four and a half inch reach advantage. He's going to want to use that as al Hanan tries to come in to land those powerful shots. He's a knockout artist, but he's got to get inside to land those shots. With the flag of his native Alberta, Dalton Steibel. Set for this is BKFC and indeed pro combat sports debut. Steibel has had four AMI MMA bouts. He told us in our fighter meeting he has an extremely aggressive style. And Steibel said, make no mistake, I have the cardio to maintain an ultra high pace throughout this fight. So I'm just another one of the guys, he said he was 235 pounds at one time. Just constant hard work, constant pressure. Feels like nobody's gonna outgas him. That's what he does. He gets in your face from the beginning to the end. Steibel is ambidextrous. He told us, I'm going to keep switching stances of his opponent, Hassan Al-Hanim. Steibel said, my only real concern with Al-Hanim is his power rear hand. If I can negate that, avoid that, Steibel said, this fight is mine. One thing he said that I really like, he said his right hand is what will get the KO, but it's that left hand that's going to make his opponent quit. Born in Iraq, now based here in Alberta, Hassan Al Hanim. This is his BKFC and Pro Combat Sports debut. Al Hanim is 8 and 2 in amateur boxing. He told us he feels one of his best attributes as a fighter is that he is extremely adaptable. Al Hanim said, I'm going to walk down my opponent, Dalton Steibel, from the outside to the mid range to the clinch, and I will be very heavy, very physical in the clinch. Well, El Hanem said he is a hunter. I like that. He's out there hunting right now, just looking for the right place, the right time. He wants to get that mid-range. He feels like if he lands that overhand right, nobody in this division is taken, and he's walking away with the victory. El Hanem said of Dalton Steibel, I think he's going to keep coming forward. He's going to try to wear me down through high volume. Al Hanem said, though, I believe I am a vastly more technical striker. El Hanim said, I have to keep my emotions at bay. I cannot get pulled into a brawl. El Hanim said he's not only a better technical fighter, he's going to be the bully out there. He's going to push this guy around and make him question himself from the very beginning. This is intriguing at 155 pounds. Sean, these guys don't like each other. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next five of the night scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the lightweight division presented to you by bucked up energy drink get bucked up introducing to you first fighting out of the red corner tonight he wears green he stands five feet nine inches tall his official weight 155.4 pounds tonight he makes his bkfc debut fighting out of stony plain alberta Dalton Steibel! And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and white. He stands 5 feet 5 inches tall. His official weight, 154.7 pounds. Tonight, he also makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, by way. Samoa, Iraq. Here is Hassan Ahanim. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Don Steibel said Hassan Ahanim is a good technical striker, but I have more heart, I have more determination. Both 
fighters at the screen, standing three feet apart. Round number one, and opening up immediately, Hassan al Hanem. He's in the black trunk. Screen trucks on the turn for Don Steibel. To the body goes al Hanem, holding the overhook. John Gord, left hand for Steibel. Showing a lot of toughness by walking through those punches right there. And El Hanim's got to be careful. He doesn't throw with too much power the entire time because you will gas yourself out. You only have so many fastballs to throw as a pitcher. Same thing here. You can only throw so many overhands right there, or you're going to gas yourself out. Both well, fighters up to scratch. Round number two. Stepping off the scratch and exploded four. Don Steibel exploded four immediately off of scratch. Hassan Al Hanin. Good turn on the underhook from Steibel. And they have time for right hand step in. And that's where Steibel needs to be right in his opponent's face the entire time. Steibel on the left hand. He cannot let his opponent get the full extension. Huge overhand right. Al Hanin now coming forward. Big rear right uppercut from Hassan Al Hanin. Steibel on the left hand. This phenomenal pace. is a battle show. Right, right. 80 seconds remaining in round two. Off the jab from Al Hanel. Right hand again, left hand. Stabo resetting, missing with the one two. Al Hanel setting his feet, stalking pressure, circling out Dalton Stabo. Step in right hand again, overhand right. until he got hit with that punch. Steibel walked through so many hard shots. They were glancing, they weren't perfectly placed, but that one was. Man, because you got the impression right there. Give me the glove, man. El Hassan Hassan did not land that punch. He might have gassed himself out, but it didn't happen there. He landed it. He said as long as he lands that overhand, he's winning the fight. You saw referee Andrew Glenn determine there was no reason to count. Dalton Steibel flat on his back, ending this fight. 
And that is a phenomenal BKFC and Pro Combat Sports debut for Hassan al Hanim. I mean, his landing percentage was phenomenal right there, especially with those power shots. I don't know if he threw a jab. He didn't need to throw a jab. When you land overhands like that, man, beautiful fight. Don Steibel definitely had his moments. Both fighters immediately off of scratch, Chris, from the start of this fight, opened up and threw. Hassan al Hanem dropping Dalton Steibel, who went to a knee and bounced off the canvas. Latter stages of round one, but correctly ruled the knockdown by Andrew Glenn. And then the knockout comes in round two. And, and, Sean, we've been talking about the size of this ring, what that has to do with it. And, and I really don't know if it is the size of the ring or the fact that these people are coming to fight. I mean, they're trying to get these contracts and trying to get in here. You know, we've brought them from the prospect or to the prospect series from the trials, and, and people are coming to fight. Chris, I would also offer that now that you're in charge of the BKFC prospect series, these fighters want to impress you. They're motivated by you. You talk to them. You work with them. The fighters all talk to you, Chris, in our fighter meetings about. It was great to meet you. I want to show you what I can do now that you've given me this opportunity from the open tryouts. Well, I try and teach when I'm there, and I try and let them know I'm giving you an opportunity right here. That's all I can do. Let's see what you do with it. And these guys are showing me a lot, Sean. Enoch Cree Nation has authorized the Wyoming Combat Sports Commission to regulate tonight's bouts. They're doing an outstanding job. You see our world-class referees, outstanding judges, although they have not turned in a lot of scorecards. These, these judges, they're just getting the best seat in the house for nothing. They don't even have to really be here, I'm thinking, Sean. Jeez. Once again. They're scoring rounds. They're just not <laughs> turning in scorecards at the end. Our strike stats for this bout presented by Bucked Up Energy Break. You can just see here a lot more punches being thrown and landing. But, I mean, man, I mean, two knockdowns. Stiebel took a lot of punches right there. That was just a phenomenal fight, a phenomenal pace. This is what we want to see in the prospect series. There was a lot of heat between these two fighters. They just hugged. They both went all out. Quality and a quality win for Hassan al Hanim. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andy Glenn, steps in and calls a stop to this fight. At one minute, five seconds into round number two, for your winner by K.O. Hassan Al-Hanim! Al-Hanim has a four-second knockout, and we see why here, Sean. This guy's got power, knows how to throw it, and if he lands that hard shot, he has a good chance of winning any fight, I believe. We're in the first week of March, but that is an early candidate for BKFC Fight of the Year for 2024. Hassan Al Hanim dropping Dalton Steibel in round number one and finishing Dalton Steibel in round number two. Victorious by way of second round KO, Hassan Al Hanim defeats Dalton Steibel. We are all the way live from Satellite 5. I'm Brian Socha, and as always, so much to get into this week on the Bare Knuckles Show. We're glad you're hanging out. Bare Knuckle just takes one shot. If he can land a good shot, he can do some damage. Six new major signings, a new location overseas that we're going to be doing. It gives me so much more energy and reason to go ahead and do what I do. Oh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit! Oh, shit! inappropriate. <laughs> I'm Jake Bronson Craig. I fight out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. What makes me think that I can beat Sam is that I'm a more technical fighter. His nickname is Blunt Force Drama. So of course, the guy's obviously willing to come forward and fight. I'm also that style of fighter. I think it'll be very exciting. My prediction for the fight is either I'm getting knocked out or Sam's getting knocked out. One of us is going out of that ring. Live from the River Cree Resort and Casino, BKFC Prospects Edmonton is brought to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink, OnlyFans, Grunt Style Apparel, and Forged Irish Stout.
And now here's your tail of the tape brought to you by Grunt Style. Cruiserweights, Jake Craig versus Sam Colt. Thing you can see here, there is a five inch reach advantage for Polk, but also a five centimeter fist size advantage. A little bit bigger hands, a little bit more surface and land those hard shots. The United States Army veteran Sam Polk now set for his BKFC debut. Polk is 3-0 in his pro MMA career. He told us in our fighter meeting, I want to establish my reach advantage early, be aggressive from the outside, and continually move from the outside. Definitely an aggressive fighter, wants to come forward the entire time. Does good at range, but he wants to get close sometimes, get in there, he will switch stances. He wants to confuse the opponent the entire time. Sam Polk is naturally left-handed. He told us that he will predominantly fight in the orthodox stance. He will start off from scratch right-handed. Polk said, what I cannot do is throw wild hooks. He told us, I've watched a lot of BKFC. I see that straight punches usually defeat the wide and wild punches in this sport. Well, he says he has to control the tempo with this fight. He does so by using proper footwork to control that range. I can't wait to see this fight. This guy's nickname is Blunt Force Trauma. You know he comes to fight. Jay Craig now set for his bare knuckle fighting championship debut. He's 2-0 in pro MMA, 1-0 in pro boxing. Craig described his style as quoting technical brawler. He said, I want to look like the bare knuckle fighting championship version of my boxing idol, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Power lift, you can tell just look how strong this guy is out there, but really wants to focus on his head move, movement, focus on defense. He understands you can't get in there and trade punches. You have to be smarter on this. He says he's been doing that by focusing on not getting hit. As Sam Pohl is naturally left-handed, who will fight predominantly orthodox. Jake Craig is naturally right-handed and told us he will fight predominantly southpaw. He said, I'm going to use smart defense to create openings. I know that my opponent, Sam Polk, is a skillful striker. I know he's effective with his jab. I need to draw him in, land, and then get back to the outside. Another one of our tryout guys, I noticed the power right away. He said he wants to stay long at the beginning, then make it in the pocket, and then he wants to land those big bombs, those power shots from the inside. Craig said, above all else, I know I have to be smart defensively, and that opens with excellent head movement. So on both these guys' fantastic mustaches, this is going to be a good one. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are sent for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the Cruiserweight division. Presented to you by Grunt Style Apparel, America's patriotic apparel leader. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears red and gold trimmed in black. He stands six feet, two inches tall. His official weight, 205.4 pounds. He holds an undefeated MMA record at 3-0, and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Missoula, Montana, USA, here is Sam Blunt Force Trauma. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears red and black. He stands six feet, one inch tall. His official weight, 205.9 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of three fights. And tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Here is Jake Bronson. Craig And our referee in charge of the action, Andy Social. Sam Polk said, I have to be composed. I have to control the tempo of this fight. Two very powerful and very hard-hitting cruiserweights. Round number one. Oh, big right hand and a fast start. And that drops Jake Craig. Taking the mandatory eight now from Andy Social. You see he's in the red and black trunks. 
Best start for the American, Sam Polk, who's in the red and gold trucks. We will continue. Big swings on the inside, more right hands. Half time for a snatch by Craig, but he takes the second knockdown on the right uppercut. But that's indeed ruled by referee Andy Social, and it is. Here comes the count picked up at five by Social. Eight. Craig is still badly hurt right now. Polk better jump on him right now, not let him get to the second round. Polk talked about being composed. He's being aggressive. Craig is Six. still hurt, Sean. I guess let's see if they let this go. Eight, nine, I don't think they're going eight, to. Ten, eight, ten. Let's go. Wow. Andy Social will let Jay Craig continue. Drop three times here in round number one. Drop four times here in round number one. We are done. Welcome to BKMC, Sam Polk. What an impressive performance that was right there. 406. Four knockdowns in one round. Just every punch he landed was with power. <laughs> Did exactly Montana, what you need to do. When Montana, you hit your guy, you hurt him, you take him out. You don't give him a chance to get in that second round. Next round, there was a lot of hype around Craig right there, just coming from the tryouts from his background, but that's all it takes here in Bernicle. These two guys were mere images of each other. If you look at these guys, I mean, it, it, it just takes one shot, and that first shot did a lot of damage. Craig tried to do what he could. Thank you for stopping. Tie up a few, but every time he did, he was getting hit. Man. You, just, you just can't get hit like that. Jay Craig said he wanted to fight like his boxing idol, Marvin Hagler, but Sam Polk showed the power of marvelous Marvin Hagler. For sure, man, he looked phenomenal out there. And again, Chris, in our fighter meeting, Sam Polk talked about straight punches being composed. He did that, and yet he still showed ferocity in landing those four knockdowns to the knockout. Blunt force trauma, it's on the name right there. You don't have a nickname like that, and you don't display it. You don't show it. He showed it the entire fight right there. Disappointment, certainly, for Jake Craig fighting here in his home province, Alberta. But just no answer for the power and the precision of Sam Polk. That overhand right. Just a lot of clean shots right there, man. Woo! Another little just left hand that got in quickly. So at that point, once you've got your opponent hurt, it doesn't take as much. Any little shots can do the damage. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andy Social, steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 1 minute 12 seconds into round number one. For your winner, by KO, Sam Blunt Force Trump. Sean, I've seen Polk a few times. He's told me I'm going to be in there and get the knockout. Well, he, he came true with that one. He was accurate. What a performance right there against a very tough opponent. BKFC's deep cruiserweight division just got that much deeper. Sam Polk, 3-0 in his pro MMA career. Now 1-0 with emphasis in his BKFC career. Four knockdowns to the finish in round number one. Victorious by way of first round KO, Sam Polk defeats Jake Craig. Saturday, April 6th, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship returns to the UK. Live from Planet Ice, Milton Keynes with three championships up for grabs. In the main event, James Lights Out Lily hunts for his first BKFC title when he faces the undefeated Franco Tenaglia. Also, Gary Fox fights the hands of Brick John Hick for the vacant heavyweight UK championship. And Danny Christie defends his light heavyweight UK title against David one more round. All this plus more. Get tickets at BKFC.com. My name is Chad Lucanis, and I fight out of the Wolf House. I'm just gonna go in there and win. Anyway, schooling the guy, knocking out the guy, not even just him, really, just I feel like I could just beat anybody. I believe that I just have different capabilities compared to other guys. I know just skill for skill, he's not on my level. He's not gonna touch me. No matter what, I will get my hand raised.
Fubo TV brings you our tale of the tape for this bout at 155 pounds. Chad Lucanis versus Trey Santos. Sean, very similar here. Two inch height advantage for Santos, one inch reach advantage. That's not much when it comes to a fight like this. Nothing to do with tail and tape. These two guys, whoever puts their game plan into play is probably gonna win this fight. Trey Santos, set for his third fight at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. He's had seven Ami MMA bouts, two in amateur kickboxing. He played soccer at the collegiate level in AIA, French University. In our fighter meeting, Trey Santos said, through two fights at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, I now fully understand I cannot have a slow start. Santos said, throughout my combat sports career, I have started slow. It changes tonight in this bout understands he needs to be more composed in this fight, but use that aggressiveness. He said he has, he says he has to be all the way in or all the way out. He cannot stay in the mid-range here. Santos said, when I'm all the way in, I'm in the clinch and I'm unloading with high volume, but I also want to land punches on the exits from the clinch. As he's doing so, he wants to utilize the jab the entire time. Feels like the main thing for this, he has to fight a smart fight. Doesn't want to get baited in to an exchange where he's going to lose. He wants to make sure he's controlling the pace and the range the entire fight. right there. Lucanus said he has been a big fan of Manny Pacquiao. His whole time he's been around his whole career, and he said Manny Pacquiao's done. He wants to be the next Filipino superstar. Lucanus also told us, I want to have a fast start off from scratch while always being defensively sound. I'm going to keep landing as my opponent, Trey Santos, disengages. I want to showcase my movement in and outside the side, and I want to showcase my athleticism. And he wants to get inside and then let those hands go. His main goal here, he wants to make an impact. He says he's going to take over this division tonight. It's the first step in that. He's been waiting for this opportunity for the last eight years since he's been training. This is his coming out party right now. Lucanis said of his opponent, Trey Santos, he's very durable. I know he can take shots. Lucanis said, what I've noticed with Trey Santos is that after he lands, he backs up and he does so with his chin very hot. So the thing we noticed about Lucanis when we were at the tryouts, Guys, phenomenal head movement. Very good at avoiding shots. Let's see if he can translate that into a real fight. Into the ring with Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Presented to you by Fubo TV. Watch live sports and TV without cable, including BKFC on Fubo TV. Start your seven day free trial at FuboTV.com. Introducing to you first. Fighting out of the red corner, tonight he wears black and blue. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, 155.9 pounds. Tonight, he steps into the squared circle for the third time. Fighting out of Wichita, Kansas, USA, here is Trey Santos. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears blue and white. He stands five feet, seven inches tall. His official weight, 155.1 pounds. Tonight, he makes his BKFC debut, fighting out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Here is Super Chad Luke. And our referee in 
charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliana. Press Santos told us, I really respect the boxing and the technical boxing of Chad Lucanis. I cannot allow him to make this a boxing match. I have to make this a bare knuckle fight. Dan Mergliana starts this battle round number one. Blue and white trunks for Chad Lucanis, black trunks for Trey Santos. Santos off the double jab, stand to the outside. Santos trying to split that high, but open striking guard of Chad Lucanis. Lucanis looking to explode in to the body of the Chad again from Trey Santos. The left right hand circling out Santos. One of those shots well. The jab again from Santos. Off the mark. Stepping left hand, right hand to the body. Big combination from Lucanis. Santos took that well, circling out. You can just tell Santos when I know how to couple of fights he's looking experienced. <laughs> to the body goes Chad Lucanis. Right hand, right back on the rear right hand for Trey Santos. Left hook just off the mark. Step in on the hooks. 60 seconds remaining, round number one. Both fighters in the center right, circle no strikes, clinch no now no to the ropes. Back it up, back it up. Back from Santos off the jab, hook jab from Lucanis. I like how Lucanis just explodes in with combinations and he's throwing two or three punches at a time and so when he gets into his position. Bad right hand, that sets Santos back. Now to the body goes Lucanis. Santos circling out, hard to the body, to the head. Big shots now, ripping the body, Chad Lucanis. And down goes Trey Santos. That was all set up by that first jab, he knocked him back with it. See if Santos can get up. He did a lot of damage. No, body work did too the much for him. The count of ten. And the win just like that for Chad Lucanis. It was that body work right there. Lucanis did a great job. He didn't go head hunting after his opponent. He dug to the body. I think that's what did the damage right there. And look at those sides, Sean. Look at right there. Look at the side of Santos. It is already starting to bruise up. Fighters always talk to us about, quote, ripping the body. Chris, that was ripping the body by Chad Lucanis. For his first fight, I was really impressed with the way he got in. And when he got into position, he unloaded. He laid in combinations. He's not just looking to land one shot to end the night. Two, three, four punches right there. I was really impressed with it. Look at that jab. That started it off. Now he has the put on. Throwing some. Yeah, hard to find. There's no corner to hide in right there. There's some body punches being thrown. Oh, that was a beautiful right hand of the body. Another good right. It was those digging shots to the body that I think did the damage. And look at Santos right there. That, that grimace of pain right there. He's thinking, I got to get up. I want to get up. His body said, you're not getting up. Trey Santos is a talented fighter. This was his third bout of BKFC. I've known him since the Ammies in MMA in Kansas. But Chad Lucanis showing next-level body work. He was Mom, you see that shit? and then explosive and unloading with those precision it's the super power hooks. Show, baby. Relentless to the body of Trey Santos. Watching. That is so, a body puppy. knockout. I want Chris. you. That was a at? beautiful performance you right there. Puppy? Santos Where looked good. At? Santos was doing a lot of positive things out there. It was just that one punch, that jab well, that caught him, that knocked him out. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Lucanis did the right thing. He exploded and went to the body. Great job. Nice moment between these two very nice fighters. It was all respect. It's all in both directions. It's business. No. Straight up, it's business. It's business. Here it is, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Merkliana, reaches the count of 10 at 1 minute 50 seconds into round number one. For your winner, by K. Super Chad Lucanis! All right, stand by with your winner, Super Chad Lucanis. Man, congratulations here at the Prospect Series. You got a lot of fans in the house. You have a ton of support here tonight, man. You already know, you already know. I, I want to say thank you to my sponsor, Cosmopolitan Cleaning. My boys over there, they do a good job. Follow them on Instagram. Can I, can I call someone out here? 
Uh, well, I mean, you I did win. But let's, let's, let's just talk about this. About you stepped inside of this ring. You went bare knuckle. Not a lot of folks will do that, but you had a lot of hype behind you. We did the spotlight on you. We thought you were one of those guys, and you lived up to all the billing tonight. What was your experience like inside the BKFC Squared Circle? How do I say this? This sport, this where the real dogs come out. I know a lot of these pro boxers and pro MMA guys, they think they tough shit. But this here, this where the real 2% of dogs come out. We take the gloves off. Hey, you see it, man. This ain't even my blood either. But this that real shit. You know what I'm saying? This that real shit right here, okay? BKFC, I'm here now. I'm the new guy in town. I love it. Hey, if you had one message to our president, David Feldman, the man that makes these decisions that could put you on that roster officially, what would that message be? Yo, David Feldman. Wait, wait, what's the question? Sorry. I said, what would your message be to the president, David Feldman? He's the one that makes the decisions that make sure you get on the big shows officially on the roster. Okay, David Feldman. I'm gonna tell you right now, as you can see, I'm a handsome ass motherfucker. So you wanna sell tickets, man. I'm your guy, look at me. I didn't even get hit, bro. I didn't even get hit. I'm your guy, I'm telling you. And I got one more thing to say. I got one more thing to say here. Shush, hey, chill, relax. Okay, so Poppy, you taking everything I work for, motherfucker. You know who the real face of the Philippines is, and that's me. I'm gonna fight your fucking ass. You know it's me. All right, let's hear it. That man, he's your winner tonight, Super Chad Lucanis. Nothing short to say there. Not short on words as Lucanis, but man, he looked phenomenal out there. A lot of good body work, a lot of good pushes. Looked very calm and, and collected for his first bare knuckle fight. Chad Lucanis was patient. Trey Santos was trying to establish his jab, but to the inside, thunderous to the body to the knockout, to the win. Victorious by way of first round KO, Chad Lucanis defeats Trey Santos. Friday, March 22nd, the world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, finally returns to Bulgaria for BKFC 58. In the main event, Kalyan Kolev is back in the squared circle and looking to stay on the winning track. But the always ready to fight, Tony Markulev has other plans. Also, many more electrifying Bare Knuckle fights. It's Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Watch it live on the BKFC app. Download it at BKFC.com. My name is Drew Wildboy Stuvo, and I fight at a Wolf House MMA. Lots of guys, they don't want to do bare knuckle. They're too scared to do bare knuckle, and I'm all for it. My keys to victory, use a lot of feints and bait him in, and then when I bait him in, he opens up. I'm gonna crack him. I'm gonna jab his face off and make him want to quit. I respect you for taking this fight, especially on such short notice, but once we're in there, you're gonna wish you didn't take this fight, and I'm gonna end your career for good. In the welterweight division, Drew Stuvey versus Jay Kelly. Our tale of the tape is presented by Rasha. You see, Stuvey has a significant height advantage. However, only a two-inch reach advantage. A little more important, he's gonna wanna utilize that, though. Jay Kelly said he's gonna get in and throw bombs the entire time. Stuvey's gotta make sure that he makes a pay when he does. Set for fight number one in BKFC. He's had 10 pro boxing bouts, two fights in pro MMA. Kelly told us in our fighter meeting, I want to be extremely aggressive. He also said, my ideal fight is to stand in the center circle with my opponent, Drew Stuvey, and just let my hands go as he lets his hands go. Kelly describes himself as an unorthodox fighter, but very aggressive right now, but loves to counter at the same time. He feels like BKFC is the place for him because he, quote, he just wants to let the beast go. Kelly said, I feel I have a very good ability to read and react to situations. I want to throw hard left hooks to the body, smart exits from the clinch. I want to also be explosive in with my power punches. 
would love nothing more to get in the middle of the ring and brawl, but he says the main thing, he has to get off first each time. Jay Kelly said, I think Drew Stuvey wants to be aggressive. I hope so, that's exactly what I want. You can tell he's studied quite a bit though, because he understands he's had to put his hands in a little different position, a little more further out right there for defensive purposes. This isn't boxing, this is real fighting. Drew Stuvey, set for bout number one at BKFC. One and zero in his pro boxing career. Stuvey, thirteen and three in amateur boxing. He told us he feels he is a very fundamentally sound boxer. Stuvey said, "I want to showcase fast hands, and excellent footwork, long straight punches." Stuvey said he wants to fight like Conor Tierney out there, control the range, not getting hit, moving that head, controlling the entire pace of the fight, when and where it happens. Stuvey said, I believe my opponent, Jay Kelly, wants to fight on the inside. He wants to brawl. I know he's tough. Stuvey said, I'm not going to play his game. I want to avoid brawling. I want to showcase my technical striking from range. He wants to utilize that range to not get hit. He said he doesn't want to be in a fight tonight. He wants to be in the knockout tonight. The reason he's doing that because he's not going to be the one getting hit. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Presented to you by Russia. Upgrade to champion mindset with Russia. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red quarter. Tonight, he wears red and blue. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. His official weight, 162.7 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of 12 fights, and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Brockville, Ontario, Canada. Here is Lethal J. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears white and green. He stands six feet, two inches tall. His official weight, 165.4 pounds. He holds an undefeated pro boxing record at 1-0. And tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Here is true wild boy, Stu. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Drew Stuvey said, I want to utilize a smart and disruptive mix of being first, countering, being first, countering. Now see if the scratch line is Jay Kelly, round number one. Rapid fire start, big swings from Kelly. He's in the red and blue trucks. White trucks for Drew, trucks for Drew Stuvey. Kelly, right, the start right, that he back, wanted now to the inside. Double oh. underhooks draws the break from Andrew Glenn. It's a hard style to deal with sometimes. Kelly's coming with just those bombs the entire time. Duck under from Kelly. Throwing the right hand. Side headlock position from Stuvey. Draws the break from Andrew Glenn. He was already bleeding a little bit. Straight one, two, counter right hand from Stuvey. Kelly walks through and throws a right hand of his own. Big left hand. Right. And chancery position draws the break from Andrew Glenn. Glenn Kelly. Kelly, don't come over the neck in that guillotine head chancery position. One, two, Stuvey. Cut outside of his left arm and lands that left hand. Flush in the face of Kelly, and that draws a smile on the face of Kelly. Hey, Kelly's hey, coming hey, to fight, Sean. Listen, listen. Glenn now telling Stuvey, listen to me when I say break. There's the entry left hook from Jay Kelly. Right hand. Dr. Dot Mootsy in the ring. 
the chief medical officer of BKFC. All right, sit that. Scooby has a nasty cut over the eye, too. Uh, this fight is over! I don't know if Scooby's gonna be happy. Jay Kelly cannot continue. A couple hard shots right there. Throw from the underhook, Chris. Now, this is either going to be a no contest or a DQ win for Jay Kelly. Well, I didn't really see where the ankle was hurt. Maybe it's right in here. I'm not sure. You see the underhook, the turn, and the throw. Is that a, a disqualifiable offense right there? It's definitely an illegal action, and this is really referee's discretion. I mean, some hard shots right there being landed. I, I mean, I'm just trying to see where the ankle injury occurs. So, yeah, let's see how they rule this. Andrew Glenn just came over to our commentary position. I spoke to him off camera, off microphone. He said it was an illegal throw. He spoke to him off camera, off microphone. He said it was an illegal throw. He believes that Kelly was injured on the underhook in the throw, and he's going to give this a disqualification wow. win to Jay Kelly. That's interesting because I, I, it's hard to see where that injury occurred right there. It looked like it came from the throw. It could happen right beforehand. Hey guys, I, I'm not sure, but I didn't there. see it happening right there. Chris, off camera, off microphone. Like the discussion with Andrew Glenn, he has overruled himself. On second thought, Andrew Glenn said, I believe now that the leg buckled on the punch, the throw was after. Therefore, it's not a disqualification win for Jay Kelly, although he had it ever so briefly. Andrew Glenn has changed his mind. He's now saying this is a TKO win for Drew Stuvey. Well, you know, I just didn't see the throw as being what hurt the ankle right there. I mean, it, it very clearly, I'm sure, hurt beforehand, but I, I'm not at all thinking that Kelly just faked it, but it just, like, there, maybe that was it, but... Like so Andrew said, Glenn is saying that the ankle rolls on the punch. Yeah, like I said, right here, once he's down, I don't see an ankle rolling, you know what I mean? So I, I, it couldn't have been the throw. It might have happened beforehand. I don't think that Kelly's faking it, but I think that it happened earlier, so I... Very unfortunate that the fight has to end like this. Because that, that was a fun fight to watch. Like I said, never want people to think I'm saying Kelly faked that because I don't think he did. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, on the advice of our ringside physician, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, calls a stop to this fight at 1 minute 11 seconds into round number one. For your winner by TKO, Drew Wildboy Stuba. All right, standing about here with the Wild Boy. Little sportsmanship here, man. Hey, congratulations on the victory. He brought the heat to you early on. What a fight. There are no easy fights here in the squared circle, and you found that out tonight. What was your experience like being inside the BKFC ring? I think I just wasn't expecting it to hurt like that. The first punch, I'm like, holy fuck, I'm in this shit. But you know what? Respect to him, man. I'm sorry for throwing him off me, but he was going down regardless. Hey, congratulations. One victory in the books. You're going to have a great career. 100%. Let's make some noise out here for Drew Stuby. And Sean, I'm sure not the fight, not the start he wanted for his career, but he got the victory right there. He showed some really good things, some good fast hands. Can't wait to see this guy fight again. Again, referee Andrew Glenn on second thought, determining that Jay Kelly rolled his ankle after he was caught by a legal punch to a legal target to the head by Drew Stuvey. The throw afterwards in the eyes of Andrew Glenn did not matter. The winner by way of first round TKO due to injury, Drew Stuvey defeats Jay Kelly.
feature fight time in the heavyweight division. Stan Cermak versus Ruben Roundstone. Our tale of the tape is presented by Forged Irish Stout. Extremely even right here, Sean. There is a two inch height difference. Only one inch reach difference right here. But these two, these are both big fellas are coming. They both have one loss in their career. That is it. A lot of experience right here and a lot of wins for these two gentlemen. This is the BKFC debut for Ruben Roundstone, but he is seven and one in the sport of bare knuckle fighting. Roundstone is also at eight pro MMA bouts, eight in pro boxing, and one in bare knuckle MMA. Chris, we just need to get him about in Letway now. <laughs> Roundstone told us that he feels that he is a brawler, and he said proudly, I have the cardio to be a brawler. Roundstone also said, I actually like taking big shots early. It calms my nerves. It helps me settle into this fight, but I can't do so to my detriment. And Sean, I might have phrased that wrong. I said he has one loss in his career there. That's in bare knuckle, not in MMA. I'm not in with all the other stuff, but as a bare knuckle fighter, he's seven and one. That's phenomenal right there. And how's he done that? He understands range. He likes to get in the pocket. That's where he does his damage. Gets in there and lands those bombs. Roundstone said, I really respect the boxing of my opponent, Stan Cermak. He has a slick style. He has excellent footwork. Roundstone said, I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to try to break him mentally. I'm going to try to disrupt him. And I will be very upset, Roundstone said, if I win this fight by decision. He said, I'll be upset to the point of being angry. There's only one thing I want, and that's a victory by knockout. And he's doing so immediately. He says what he's doing, he will explode off the scratch side. He's coming for an early knockout. He's throwing bombs, he's throwing power. You're gonna see a fight right from the beginning to the end, he says. Roundstone also told us I'm going to use feints to work my way in, I want to establish myself in the pocket, and I want to throw with big power in the pocket. He's going to start off with a lot of punches, but that 1-1-2 one, one, is going to be his main thing. That double jab right to that straight, that's his combination that he really likes. The most theatrical entrance of the night belongs to Ruben Roundstone. Anthony Pettis, probably watching at home in Milwaukee, is proud of that. And that's my move. You can't do that. Hello, it's me again, I'm a fellow. And I'm coming, I'm a to push me, you can tell. Stan Cermak, set for his BKFC debut. Cermak, 12 and 1 in his pro boxing career. He told us he believes he has outstanding footwork and very fast hands for a heavyweight. Cermak also told us, I believe I have legitimate knockout power in both hands. Explosive, he describes himself as. Switches stance as well. Feels like all he has to do is land that straight right or that uppercut with his right hand. As he uses to target the body, when he lands those straight and those right uppercuts, he does a lot of damage. Cermak is naturally right-handed. He said, I will continually switch stances. I can knock out round stone, I believe Cermak said, and either stance, I'm going to keep throwing one-twos. I'm going to keep landing from range. I'm going to slip and roll off of round stone's big shots to land my own shots. Definitely wants to stay long, but the main thing for him, he cannot throw wild punches. He doesn't want to hurt his hands. He doesn't want to land the side of him. Accuracy, precision, straight punches, land on the face of his opponent, not the head. Cermak said, I expect Ruben Roundstone to rush forward off of scratch. I think he's going to try to utilize the clinch. I believe he's going to try to be very heavy on the inside and keep this fight in close range. He understands his opponent. He's watching. He knows he's going to rush it, throw these wild shots, try to get another clinch. He's going to avoid all that. He's going to just clean boxing. Like there's a little delay going on right here. Not sure if that's uh, the actress on the inside, a little mental chest going on right there. Stan Cermak awaiting his call into the BKFC ring. KFC debut for these two heavyweights. Stan Cermak from here in Alberta versus the American from Helena, Montana, Ruben Roundstone. 
Chris, the KFC Prospect Series Edmonton has delivered. We have not seen a round four tonight. People have came, come to fight Sean, and going at it the entire night. It's exactly what I expected when we came here. I saw the card, I've been at the trials, I knew what the fighters had, and they're breaking it tonight. Well, we've been talking about two factors in this prospect series. It's the small ring, and it's also, this is literally an audition to get on the main roster of BKFC. Obviously, we're trying to impress our founder, our CEO, <laughs> David Feldman, our matchmaker, Nate Shook, our entire BKFC team. It's not just winning, it's winning with emphasis, it's winning with style. And that's one thing, I was talking to all the fighters before this fight, I said the only fight that I ever regretted was the time I didn't come and bring it. And I said, I never let that happen again. Don't be me, come in here and lay it all the line. And everybody has, I have no, no complaints about anybody's fault. Chris, Canada marks our sixth nation for BKFC. Obviously, we've done MMA here. This is a phenomenal nation. The history we talk about with boxing, with MMA, it was one of the early adapters of MMA. I think about Dave Benito, one of my favorite <laughs> UFC fighters in the Art Davey original era. There's such a great history of combat sports as well as wrestling in this country. Yeah, and, and you can tell. Like I said, when I went to the tryouts, the fighters, they all came to, and, and they brought it. You know, we, I go to tryouts once a month at least, and sometimes you get a lot of great fighters, but you get some average fighters. I thought, I, I didn't even know who to cut from the from the tryouts here. Everybody was really high level. So, it, it, great fighters here the entire time. You can tell that they really take a lot of pride in it. And I'm, I'm, I'm humbled to come back a lot early and often. This is what I think for Canada. Of 20 fighters on this card, 13 from Canada representing four provinces, including, of course, here in Alberta. And we're seeing the tenacity. And these are fighters, some are making their pro combat sports debuts, but we're seeing fighters coming in from boxing, from MMA, from kickboxing, and we're seeing a really high level throughout. One gym in particular, I think, is that really good, Ryan Ford. I mean, we've seen him fight, you know, in Bellator, he's fought in boxing, a phenomenal, phenomenal talent right there. I'd like to get him involved sometime because he's so good, but man, his team has done really well today. You can just tell they're a very good gym. Chris, as we look ahead with BKFC 2024, again, we debuted June 2nd, 2018. You fought in one BKFC's two and four, the growth of this sport. We will be in California for Knuckle Mania 4, April 27th, our debut in California. We will be in Los Angeles. Again, this is our Canadian debut. We continue to expand across the United States as well as worldwide. Sean, one year ago, it would have seemed impossible to be in California. You know what I mean? The thought of that, they, they were a hard no. It wasn't even a maybe, it was a hard no. And now look at this, Knuckle Mania 4 in Los Angeles, April 27th. That is, it, it kind of boggles the mind that we got that like so quick. Mike Perry versus an opponent of yours in the UFC, Thiago Alves. Mike Perry, 3-0 and in BKFC, Thiago Alves, 2-0 and in BKFC. And Alvarez, I mean, he's put on a couple of wars in BKFC, put on some very good fights. Uh, this guy, he, he's always been a great fighter. He's a dog. He comes to fight the entire time. Next up for BKFC, March 15th, back in one of our home bases, Florida. We will be in Miami. Look at our main event. This is intriguing in the lightweight division. Howard Davis versus Sean Wilson. Great fight right there. I mean, Sean Wilson has some power in his hands right there. Howard Davis always right in contention for a title right there. And this, this whole card is going to be amazing, Sean. Rodriguez versus Franco. Fames versus Meyer. Concepcion versus Jackson. Our debut in Bulgaria in 2023 produced a sellout in Sofia. We are back in Sofia, Bulgaria, one of the true great cities of Europe. BKFC 58, Markulev versus Kolev. March 22nd, you can watch it live worldwide on the BKFC app. And, and, and the last time there, unbelievable, huge crowd. Everybody loved it right there. People on the edge of their seat the entire time. But Sean, in that region, we talked about it earlier, I mean, Nothing but great fighters over there. You've got people from several, I think there's people from 10 different countries last time, maybe more. You know, all the very tough areas, Dagestan, Uzbekistan, all those fighters were coming over there, put on a, extremely great fights. Uh, the crowd was amazing, and I look for more of the same this time. We have a lot of tough people over there. Everybody really wants to come over here and dominate this sport. And Chris, you nailed it, because as we saw in BKFC Bulgaria, 
We're seeing fighters, many coming out of high-level pro MMA, even UFC veteran, who just simply were not getting the opportunity to fight in the United States. But when they're in Bulgaria, they have that chance. Not just Bulgarians, but Central and Eastern Europeans. We're seeing that effect we talked about in Canada. 13 Canadians from four provinces on this card. When we're in the United Kingdom, we're seeing <laughs> fighters from England, from Wales, from Scotland, as well as from Western Europe, such as France, such as the Netherlands. That's the global reach of BKFC. And Sean, the only problem we're having right now is having enough weekends to put on as many fights as we want. We're getting so many people from South America, Central America, just everywhere. People want us to come put on fights. And we're like, we want to. I mean, we got Korea we're talking to, Japan, Australia. People all over the place are wanting us to come. We're wanting to go. We're trying to, but it's like, we, we, there's only so. There's only what 52, 52 weekends. We can't put on more fights than we can. We can put on. You know what I mean? It's amazing. The growth of BKFC. We think about in 2018. I think about my emotions commentating the first event. There was that. What are we going to watch? The last time I felt that was as a kid watching <laughs> UFC One Live. I think I know what I'm going to see. I don't quite know what I'm going to see. You came in with BKFC too. You had already fought in this sport once although under a much different rule set in the United Kingdom. But still, with all of your high-level experience, 15 pro boxing matches, 80-plus fights, we don't know because Tapology <laughs> lost count, and you lost count, 80-plus fights in MMA, 20 certainly in the UFC, but there was still that unknown factor. It's not just the fact that it's bare knuckle, it's the five two-minute rounds, it's this modern rule set, the unified rules now of bare knuckle fighting with the clinch the active clinch. So different from what we saw in this sport in the 17 and 1800s, and even different what we saw when this sport started to revitalize in the United Kingdom 10, 15 years ago. Well, I love what Dave Feldman has done. He's taken away anything that people might not have wanted to see. They think this makes it slow it down. This makes it more in here. It's gonna be fast paced, and it's gonna be fireworks the entire time, and, and it just makes it so conducive to wanna watch. So I'm loving every second of it. I mean. I can't think of any other rules that would make it more exciting. Everything that could have been done has been done, and you're seeing the product right here. I mean, we've had seven fights and seven knockouts. This is a great night of fights already. We do want to let you know that coming up, it's our feature bout. It's in the heavyweight division. Ruben Roundstone, who is already in the ring, facing Stan Cermak. There is an issue with the ring. They're trying to resolve that, of course, as quickly as possible. And then after that, we'll talk about our main and our co-main. And these are intriguing bouts. Jeremiah Riggs versus the Englishman, Sonny Smith, at 165 pounds. Then our main event, this is pivotal for these two elite-level BKFC women's flyweights, Jade Masson Wong from Quebec City, Quebec, versus the American from New Jersey, Gabriel Roman. All great fights we have. You know, we always put the best ones on the end, or the, the biggest ones on paper. We're seeing that right now. Like I said, Jeremiah Riggs has been a great fighter for us. Always entertaining, always in tough fights. We're not giving this guy any easy fights. He's got a hard one again tonight. We got Sonny Smith. He was another guy from the Trouts. He has bare knuckle experience. He fought over in England, the same place I did. So he's 2-0 with that. So that's going to be a great fight. You got experience for both guys. That's what we want for a co-main event. Our outstanding colleague, Cyrus Fees, usually at this point in the evening, gives you the highlights. <laughs> Cyrus, Chris, and I are going to take this. There are definitely highlights against seven fights. We have not seen a round number four. And we I open this in the middleweight division. Adam DeFreitas versus Matt Sukalukchuk. I absolutely love this fight. Sukalukchuk was, in my opinion, getting dominated the first few rounds. But he always came back. He always fought. Got the knockout. What a great fight that was. Started off the night just like I wanted with a banger. KO win from Matt Sukalukchuk in round number three. Next up in the featherweight division, Robert Dayarnay versus Desmond Johnson. And, man, this was a... Frantic pace. These guys just came out landing punches the entire time. Ended abruptly like that, but man, that was a short fight, but there was a lot of punches thrown, a lot of punches landed in that short amount of time. They are off the canvas to record the knockout. 37 seconds, round number one. Heavyweights Tyler Tremblett versus DJ Tice. Four knockdowns in this fight. Just that trend continued. Tremblett looked fantastic right there. Just Good precision, good accuracy, landed hard shots, did exactly what he needed to do. Like I said, we saw him at trials. He landed hard punches on the bag the entire time. That doesn't always translate into the fight. It did in this situation, though. Tremblant, second round TKO victory. Lightweight division, Hassan Al-Hanim versus Dalton Steibel. 
Boy, these guys did not like each other. Both these guys were trapped. Look at that beautiful right hand by Al Hassan. He said that's all he has to do. I've got a four second knockout on my record. I'm gonna do the same thing. It wasn't four seconds, but it was a beautiful fight. Hassan Al Hanim winning KO round number two. In the cruiserweight division, Jake Craig versus Sam Polk. And Sean, a little surprised by how quick this fight was decided. It was really over after that first knockdown. Polk landed a good punch. You know, Craig showed Hulk so much heart and determination by continuing to get up and fight, but man, he was hurt the entire time. Polk, four knockdowns to the knockout win and round number one. In the lightweight division, Chad Lucanis versus Trey Santos. Lucanis showed exactly what I thought he was going to show from those trials. This guy is fast, he's accurate, and look at his placement. Look at his body punches with this right hand right here in one second. Oh, oh, that's a nasty shot. You could tell it hurt Santos right there. Did it do enough? Nope, I'll do it again. That was it. You're not getting up from those two body punches, Sean. Lucanis the victor by knockout in round number one. The welterweight division, Vision Drew Stuvey versus Jake Kelly. Interesting fight right here. Stuvey landing, dealt with some adversity. Kelly coming with bombs the entire time. Little question on how this one's gonna end due to that injury right there, but great fight nevertheless. Stuvey, first round TKO win due to injury. As my English wife would say, been sussed and sorted, Chris. No more issues <laughs> with the ring. It is feature fight time. We send it to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for our feature fight of the night. Scheduled for five two minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Presented to you by Forge Iris Stout. Not here to take part, here to take over. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears Cheyenne blue with tribal print. He stands six feet, two inches tall. His official weight, 253.6 pounds. His bare knuckle fighting record stands at seven victories opposite a single defeat. And tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of the Northern Cheyenne Nation by way of Helena, Montana. Ruben Bam Roundstone Stone! And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight he wears black and gold. He stands six feet four inches tall. His official weight, 256.2 pounds. His pro boxing record stands at 12 victories opposite a single defeat. And tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Here is Stan Silverback, Sermat. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. Stan Sermat told us I cannot allow Ruben Roundstone to control on the inside. I have to use my technique, I have to use my speed. Round number one, exploding off of scratch is Ruben Roundstone, he's in the blue trunks, black and gold trunks for Stan Cermak. Roundstone did just what he said, right off hey, the scratch, coming right, forward. Break, no strike, break, 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 break. Dan Mergliotta nearly took the right hand from Ruben Roundstone on a separation. Big swings from Roundstone, big counters from Cermak. Jab to the body from Stan Cermak, jab to the head right hand. Roundstone said he would talk. He's talking to Sir Mac now. Mac now. Gotta be careful with that big puncher like that. You cannot trade. You cannot let him hit you. As Roundstone's talking, Sir Mac starting to cloud. Open chest and hands down. Now into the clinch and the active clinch. Right to the body from Roundstone. Double unders gets the draw of the separation from Urgliata. Ready? Over there, over there. Back up. On the reset. Right forward is Roundstone. Now big shots and that drops Ruben Roundstone. Cermak hard to the body. I think he hit him. Time call by Dan Bergliotta. Hit him in the back of the head, I think, in what they're saying. Bergliotta just told Cermak, you know, you hit him to the back of the head, right? Yeah, and, and, and 
Let's see the replay right here. You can see he came in, landed a good shot. Hit him a couple times while he was down. Two points. Two point deduction issued to Stan Sorbeck by referee Dan Mergliano. I think the reason right there, what they said, is if you hit them and do damage while they're on the ground, it's two. If you throw a punch and hit them, even if it doesn't do damage, that's a one point deduction. If it hurts them, it's two. Round number one resumes. Roundstone back, stepping with the naked right hand, and that landed. You see Roundstone cut under his left eye. A good place to be cut, you want to be cut over. Rear right uppercut, left hook from Cermak. Roundstone chest to chest. Short right hands in the clinch from Ruben Roundstone. Separation again from Mergliata. There's the playfulness from Cermak. Changing stances right there. Now Cermak talking to Roundstone. Lockdown pressure from Stan Cermak. On the left hand, right hand. Big shots. Roundstone circling out. His hands are low. Getting late here in round number one. Jab off the mark from Roundstone. Cermak resetting on the floor. Well blocked with that high tight striking guard from Roundstone. Roundstone playing to this very pro Albertan Stan Cermak crowd as he's fighting in his home province. Landing big right hands to the bell. That ends round number one. Like a very long round there, Sean. Let me hear, let me hear. So you have to think that's an even round right there because the knockdown that makes it a 10 8. However, that's very interesting right there. But man, Roundstone well, cannot sit there and trade like that. His face is a wreck after only one round. Dropping his hand. Overhand fake, left hook. Try and land that over him, and he's getting a very big bridge off Sermak. Take yourself down, brother. Take yourself down. We're here for that. Real time let's score go. is in use this evening, which go, means that go. the fighters in their corners are informed of the three judges' official scorecards after every round. So that is how the three judges scored it. Nine, eight. So that's a 10-9 round. It was not a knockdown. The judges saw it as a 10-9 round from Cermak. The two-point deduction to Cermak, Dan Mergliata. Right, 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 the right, right, illegal right, right. punches as Roundstone was grounded. Thus, the 9-8 round for Ruben Roundstone. So they didn't count the knockdown. That's why it was inaccurate there. Right hand. More playfulness to start round number two from Cermak. You can see Cermak feeling very confident. He feels like he's faster, his reaction time is better. I don't think he feels any threat of getting hit by Roundstone. They could ride hand off the mark from Roundstone. Resetting his Cermak off the jab. If Roundstone cannot gain some respect here, this is gonna be a tough night for him. Cermak, the natural right-hander, told us he would keep switching stances. Putting the power in his right jab as he stands southpaw right to the body. One to the body. Hook off the mark from Roundstone. Roundstone sitting back, waiting the counter, couldn't land. Naked right hand again from Roundstone off the mark. Running forward, Ruben Roundstone. Left hands on the turn from Cermak. Roundstone continuing the throw to the head. Quickly out allowing this in the active clinch. Now the separation with 50 seconds remaining round two. See the smear of blood on the face of Ruben Roundstone. Slight abrasion under Cermak's right eye. And that naked right hand being thrown. Chris, it's just not there for Roundstone. No, it's definitely not going to be there. He needs to either turn that into a body punch or come behind the jab. That naked right hand, it's a little slower. And, and Cermak definitely thinks it's coming. He knows it's coming. It's easier to defend that one. There's that overhand right. Swing and a miss with the rear right hand from Roundstone. Jab to the body. Cermak's doing a good job of throwing those right hand jabs. I can't wait till he starts throwing that to that straight left. That's going to be some damage. Just like that. On the left hand, right hand to the mid range. From the halftime point now to the body goes Sam Cermak. To the bell. Next stop, round three. Those were some heavy punches to the body right there by Cermak. Roundstone took him like a champion. You cannot take too many of Side. 
So a hockey player, he knows about fighting right there. Let's see if he wants to step in sometime, Sean. Both fighters towing the line up to scratch. And those are the actual three judges' scores. 18 18. Now number three underway. Literally running forward into the pocket of Ruben Roundstone. I feel like Cermak is doing a good, really good about that right hand right now. When he changes the southpaw, he has a lot of control. You can see those punches coming very well. Short right hands and a clinch from Roundstone. Out of cut two to keep this fight moving. 90 seconds remaining, round three. Is that Salpo? Watch how he controls the pace with that jab. In that step in, naked right hand, the two without the one for Roundstone. It's just not landing. It's taking Cermak off his striking line, making him reset, but it's not landing. Down pressure on the duck under. Cermak told us he feels for a heavyweight with a lot of power. He has outstanding footwork, outstanding hands, and he has now dropped Ruben Roundstone. First knockdown of this fight, and here's the count from Mogliano. And that's right in the eye. I don't think he's going to be able to get up. The first knockdown is the only knockdown. Victory for Stan Cermak. And so that's another one of those we've seen many times. We get punched in the eye in the right spot. Doesn't matter. It drops people, and then they just... They don't feel like they can see. They have to stop the fight because that's too dangerous. If you can't see and you're going to get hit with another one of those bombs, especially by somebody like Cermak, that's going to do a lot of damage. A jab from the lead power hand, the naturally right-handed Cermak Maybe not box. from the southpaw stance is the final punch not of box. this fight. Beautifully placed, dropping round Stone. He takes the 10 count from Dan Mergliata. Heavyweight division in BKFC just got that much deeper. Stan Cermak, 12 and 0, 12 and 1 in his pro boxing career, 1 and 0 in his BKFC career. You can tell that he grew by leaps and bounds in that fight. It takes a minute to get used to it. He needed a fight like this. Really felt like he could the range, switch stance. He looked really good with that right hand in front, leading that jab right there. But he, he looked good both ways, Sean. Bucked up energy drink brings you our strike stats, the final for this heavyweight fight. And Roundstone threw a lot more, but man, I mean, that percentage was very good for Sir Mac. And uh, the main thing, that knockdown, that was all she, she needed to get one knockdown, got the victory with it. Ruben Roundstone in his BKFC debut entered seven and one in the sport of bare knuckle. He definitely has power. He was certainly game, but Stan Cermak showing class, showing footwork, showing precision as well as power. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Mergliata, reaches the count of 10 at one minute, 12 seconds into round number three. For your winner by KO Stan. Silverback, Cermak! Cermak showed that he is a veteran, Sean. A lot of poise in there, waited for the right time, stayed calm, cool, collected, and looked fantastic. Both men threw big power punches, but it was a jab that ended this fight. Beautifully placed from the southpaw stance for Stan Cermak. The delay to the canvas, and that's the fight. The winner, by way of third round knockout, Stan Cermak defeats Ruben Roundstone.
Why pay over a hundred bucks a month for cable when it's half the cost? Entertainment for the whole family. Rated number one in customer satisfaction by JD Power. Try free at FuboTV.com. We the people are desperate for common ground. On this, we agree. Those who protect our freedom and families deserve our unwavering support. We give it through folds of honor. We the people have found what unites us. We will meet sacrifice with hope. Join us. River Cree Resort and Casino is your home for world-class entertainment, dining, and gaming experiences. Enjoy a luxurious weekend getaway. Dine in style, catch a show, or go for a skate on NHL-sized rinks. River Cree Resort and Casino. Excitement? Bet on it. Tonight, in the co-main event, we witness the return of Jeremiah Big Rig Riggs as he hits the comeback trail after a nearly two-year hiatus due to an ACL injury. But standing in his way is the formidable Sonny Smith, who has his own plans for the evening. While their plans are different, their missions are the same. Leave it all in the squared circle and emerge victorious. Then, in the main event, it's a showdown of female warriors as the tough and determined Gabrielle Roman knuckles up to toe the line with the number one flyweight Canadian sensation, Shah Massamwan. These are your main events, live from Canada, inside the illustrious River Creek Casino in the City of Champions, Edmonton. It's BKO in the City of Champions, Edmonton. It's BKFC Prospects. The future is here, and it all starts right now. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is presented by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Edmonton, a hockey town where the great one Wayne Gretzky helped bring four Stanley Cups. And just like a hockey fight, we ditched the gloves and we're throwing down here at the River Creek Resort and Casino. Coming up next, Sonny Smith made a name on the UK bare knuckle scene undefeated in his BKFC debut. He has drawn the big rig, Sonny Smith and Jeremiah Riggs tonight. And our main event, flyweight champion Christine Perea has a new challenger in Heather Hardy, but one of these two ladies, the U.S.'s Gabrielle Roman and Canada's John Masson Wong, are calling next. Expect a barn burner between these two killers. And we are all bucked up here at the River Creek Casino and Resort here in Edmonton, where it has 100% delivered with the prospect cards. It has been all knockouts. That's how you make a debut. That's how you make a first impression in a brand new country like Canada. You bring your best. It's been all finishes and this crowd has been electric from start to exactly where we are right now. Co-main event and main event coming up next. That's what we want to do when we go to the tryouts. When Chris Lytle and Nate should go to the tryouts to find these fighters, we want them to deliver. That's what we've done, and no doubt, David Feldman, Nate Shook, they're going to have a lot of big decisions to make to see which one of these fighters makes it to one of our main cards. So what a night it has been. We've already seen the highlights as we kind of had a little bit of a break there. Sean covered those. So with that being said, there's only one thing to do. Knuckle up and throw down. Let's go to ringside. Sean Wheelock, Chris lights out Lytle. Thank you, Cyrus. Chris, two of the best female fighters in BKFC's women's 125-pound division in our main event, the French-Canadian Jean Masson Wong versus the American Gabriel Roman. Two of the most entertaining as well. They've done this by doing it in different ways, though. Jay Masson Wong, she likes to get in and throw power. Look at this good head remote right there. 
good footwork. Definitely improved on that from her first fight. But just wants to get in and land off. Look at those good right hands. She's landed right here. Just waiting for the right time. Oh, good right hand. She feels like if she can land these hard shots. Very impressive. Taylor Starr even got up for that. Another good right hand to the body right there. Marcel Wong believes in her power, believes if she gets in there, she's one of the hardest hitting females at 125 pounds. Gabrielle Roman, she's came in as the underdog twice, going against very tough competitors, underweight a lot of times. Nobody wanted to fight Martina Kroll, looked phenomenal in her first fight, but Roman wasn't scared at all, came in, mixed in these hard punches, and when she landed, she did damage. You can see right here, when she lands this hard shot, Kroll wanted nothing to do with it, just that little shot right there. That was all she needed to get the good knockout. Kroll, like I said, very highly talented, didn't matter. Wasn't intimidated, inter uh, intimidated, came in and dominated. Right now, it's our co-main event. Only fans brings you our tale of the tape for this bout in the welterweight division. Sonny Smith versus Jeremiah Riggs. And Sean, I very rarely bring this one up, but this size, look how that big old mitt that Jeremiah Riggs has. That's a lot more service there in. He wants to get in there and land that big old paw on the head of Sonny Smith. Jeremiah Riggs set for fight number four in BKFC. He's also had 15 pro MMA bouts. He was a cast member season seven of The Ultimate Fighter, and he is 1-0 in pro boxing. Riggs, who is one of the most affable fighters in all of BKFC. In fact, I think he's one of the most affable human beings on the planet Earth. He told us in our fighter meeting, he wants to establish his jab, work in the mid-range and the clinch, and be extremely physical whenever he's inside. Inside pressure, feels like he's a stronger opponent right now. Wants to get in there and make his opponent know that. Get in that clinch, push him around, manhandle him when he needs to. He's also gonna be fast off that scratch. Jeremiah Riggs, very complimentary of his opponent, Sonny Smith. He said he's extremely technical. He has a very good jab. Riggs said, I cannot let Smith work behind the jab, and I cannot let him be technical. I will negate him being technical by me being very rough and rugged. But he has to use defense. He said, leave no openings. Understands this is bare knuckle. He's been paying attention, watching, learning. He cannot give up any easy shots. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the co-main event! Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the welterweight division, presented to you by OnlyFans. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, tonight he wears neon green and black. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. His official weight, 165.6 pounds. His BKFC record stands at one victory opposite a single defeat with one no contest. Tonight, he makes his return to the squared circle. Fighting out of Vicksburg, Mississippi, USA. Here is Jeremiah Big Red. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black. 
He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. His official weight, 165.2 pounds. He holds an undefeated bare knuckle fighting record at 2 0, and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Brighton, England, by way of Squamish, British Columbia. Here is Sonny the Savage Smith. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Sonny Smith said, I know that Jeremiah Riggs is tough. I have to gain his timing as he's going to try to explode out of deep crouches. Oh. Round number one. Was it four enough who scratches Sonny Smith? He's in the black trunks. Right, right, Jeremiah right. Riggs in the green and black trunks. Hard overhook from Smith draws the break from Andrew Black. Big swings from Riggs on the jab the right hand. Riggs has already cut badly over that left eye, Sean. He's circling out overhand right from Riggs. Smith trying to counter. Overhook draws the break from Sonny Smith. That was smart from the Englishman. Man, that, that eye is bleeding bad. It's just pouring blood. Heavy pressure from the American Jeremiah Riggs. And you see confirmation of that deep cut to right hand and that drops Sonny Smith. Beautiful right hand. He's got power. We've seen it before, Sean. of a person Jeremiah Riggs is. You see going to Sonny Smith, who has been nothing but affable in first class throughout fight week in this is BKFC review. Disappointment for the Englishman from Brighton on the south coast of England. Sonny Smith again to get her 2-0 in the sport of BK. In his BKFC promotional debut, Smith felt that he could make an impact, but Jeremiah Riggs, heavy pressure, took away time and space from Sonny Smith, and again, Jeremiah Riggs, very clear-eyed in his complimentary assessment of his opponent, Sonny Smith, and our fighter man. He said he's extremely technical. I have to be explosive, I have to be rough, I have to be rough. But I like the way Riggs, I mean, he can close so much difference. He's long and he's linky, and the way he steps in and throws that powerful right hand, Man, he, he closes a lot of distance, which is beautiful in Ben Uncle. You don't want to stand right in front of your opponent, and he didn't need to. He got in, he landed that hard shot, and he kept throwing those hard shots. He was just off the mark a couple times, but when he finally landed, that's all it needed to do. Luckily for him, looking at it now, it was more directly in the over, like right on the top of his nose right there, so it wasn't right over the eye. But it's still, it was bleeding pretty good. Pat McPherson, world-class cut man working on the victor, Jeremiah Riggs. Not without adversity, but Riggs gets his second win in BKFC. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 49 seconds into round number one. For your winner by TKO, Jeremiah Big Rig Riggs. All right. The Big Rig is back on the road with a victory. You know, you took that cut and you automatically knew you are a veteran of this sport. You knew that you had to finish that fight in that round. That's exactly what you did. Walk me through that round. Man, uh... <sighs> It's been a lot of adversity. And you just had to, you know, dig deep in this, you know. 
I had a hell of a ride over here. I want to thank everybody in Canada. You know, uh, you guys got me through this for sure. I've never seen more hospitality in my life. You know, uh, I lost all my shit coming here. I didn't have nothing. And without uh, the print shop over there, um, shit, I can't even. You're, you're good. You're good. I mean, anyways, and then uh, this guy, the clinch, the fight shop, my boy Ryan Ford hooked me up. Without them, without y'all, man, this wouldn't be possible. I want to thank everybody out there and just going back to the fight, like I told you, I had to let that dog out. You know, I had to rise my rope. I told you I was going 90, son. Hey, listen, one thing you said leading up to this fight is you still feel like you're a top 10 fighter in the BKFC. Now that you're back on track, what's the ceiling like for you? What's next for you, Riggs? Man, you know, I just want to say thanks to David Feldman, Nate Shook, Kevin Smith, yourself, you guys, um, y'all just been wonderful to me. Um, you know, man, I, I, I'll take anything. Uh, I believe I'm the top 10 best in the world in the BKFC. I want to climb that ladder. I'm taking opportunities. I want to set the example for others to follow. Rangers lead the way. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make some noise for the big rig, Jeremiah Riggs. Huge victory for Riggs. Dealing with a lot of adversity right there. Getting cut badly and still came back to get the knockout. Beautiful job by a veteran. He has been a pro MMA fighter, a pro bull rider, a pro wrestler, and he is firmly established as a pro bare knuckle fighter and a force in BKFC stacked 165 pound division. The winner by way of first round TKO, Jeremiah Riggs defeats Sonny Smith. Casino BKFC Prospects Edmonton is brought to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink, Fubo TV, Russia, and Green Mountain Grills. And now your main event, Tell the Tape, brought to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Women's 125 pounders, Jacques Masson Wong versus Gabrielle Roman. The thing that jumps out here, out here is, is the four inch reach advantage for Roman. She's going to want to utilize that because Wong wants to get inside and land that power. set for her third fight in BKFC. She a master record of five and one, and amateur boxing two and zero, oh, and Amy kickboxing. Roman told us in our fighter meeting through two bouts in BKFC, she is really focused on being more aggressive. She said, I want to throw constant combinations. I want to move forward with purpose and establish myself on the inside. She said she wants to be aggressive, but she's got to be careful when she does so. She wants to push her opponent backwards. Feels like her opponent doesn't do well backing up, and when she does clip her, when she does hurt her, she's got to jump all over. Of her opponent, this main event, Jacques Masson Wong, Roman said she's really strong physically. She has big power. 
I think she's going to try to utilize in and out movement. I've got to negate that by landing quickly once she lands, always returning, and Roman said I have to make Jean Masson Wong move backwards. Well, she cannot trade in there. She knows the heavy hands of Wong, so she has to do what she has to do, get in, get out, and use a lot of lateral movement to lap mount her opponent, truck her down, stay in front of her, and land those hard shots. Quebec City, Quebec, Jean Masson Wong set for her fourth fight in BKFC. Masson Wong has had five pro MMA fights. She's 1 0 in pro boxing. Masson Wong told us in entering this, her fourth bout in BKFC, she's really focused on utilizing angles. Masson Wong said, I want to get to the inside, but I do not want to stand directly in front of my opponent, Gabrielle Roman, once I'm on the inside. The key word for her, pressure. She's got to press the pace the entire time. Push her opponent back, cannot let her opponent stand outside and move laterally the entire time. She's got to mirror those hips, stay in front of her, and land powerful shots. In their respective fighter meetings, Roman complimentary of Masson Wong. Masson Wong complimentary of Gabrielle Roman. She said she's a very smart fighter. I think she's going to sit back, try to time power punches. I've got to be ready to step in and land and disrupt her rhythm. She has to throw lots of feints. She wants to get a reaction from her opponent, and then she can counter effectively. Wants to utilize her good footwork, her patience, and her pressure. That's her keys. If she can do those, she's going to win the fight, she says. To get our main event started, we send it back to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the main event. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the women's flyweight division. Presented to you by Bucked Up Energy Drink. Get bucked up. Our main event is regulated by the Wyoming Combat Sports Commission, Executive Director Nick Meeker, and a special thanks to the Enoch Cree Nation. The three judges scoring our main event, Jeff Henwood, Chris Suster, Orest Zamindak, and the third person inside the squared circle, our referee in charge of the action at the bell, Big Dan Mergliata. And now, with our bare-knuckle fans watching live worldwide on the BKFC app and Fubo TV for the first time in the great nation of Canada! From the sold-out River Cree Resort and Casino, fight fans of it's time to knock off. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight she wears white trimmed in the proud colors of the United States of America. She stands five feet three inches tall. Her official weight, 123.1 pounds. Her BKFC record stands at 1-0 with one fight even. Fighting out of Perth and by New Jersey, USA, here is Gabrielle Rose. And across the ring, her opponent fighting out the blue corner. Tonight, she wears red and black. She stands five feet, four inches tall. Her official weight, 125.6 pounds. Her BKFC record stands at two victories opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Quebec City. Quebec! Here is Jean Massa. Whoa! 
Jean Masson Wong said, I have to use pressure, but it has to be intelligent pressure. Well, you take yourselves all the time. If you want to touch hands, do it now. Okay. Pivotal bout for these two ultra talented oh, women's 125 Red. pounders. Red. Round number one. Red and black trunks for Jean Masson Wong. White trunks for Gabriel Roman. the mark from Roman. Jab in the right to the body, not there for Masson Wong. To the body, oh. carrying. Big shots on the inside for Jean Masson Wong. Man, I'm going to put a hand over hand right and another. Roman is hurt, Roman is hurt. Shot and down goes Gabriel Roman. There's that power we talked about, a huge right hand right from the beginning. And Roman is still badly hurt. She's hurt. Let's see if Wong tries to come right after, right away and end it. Somebody. You need to finish it. Don't give them a chance to get knocked down, get back up. We saw it happen the first two fights of the night, Sean. Wong said, not tonight. I'm taking this opponent out. She did exactly that. Sean Ma Son Wong now 3-1 and one in BKFC with authority. BKFC Prospects Edmonton live tonight from the sold out River Cree Resort Casino is presented commercial free by Fucked Up Energy Drink. And Sean, we have to remember the one fight that Zhao Ma Song Wong did lose. It was a cut. She was doing very well in that fight. She got hit with a jab. Her head ble started bleeding. They stopped it. I mean, she's really hasn't lost a fight. She hasn't been knocked out. She hasn't been beat by decision. She lost due to a cut. That's her only loss so far, Sean. I'm starting to believe her that when she lands that right hand, when she gets inside, she's hard to beat. I mean, she's, she's done that time and time again. Uh, and Roman's been phenomenally tough. The dog out there, she took a couple very hard shots and kept getting up, but man, it's gonna be hard to take power like that at 125 pounds. John Masson Wong has had five pro MMA fights, one in pro boxing, and now four in BKFC. Without question, this is the biggest win of her life. A huge victory for Jean Masson Wong. There it was, that beautiful right hand that did the damage. Like I said, Roman did a great job of taking that. I, I was surprised at how easily she took it, but man, it, it didn't matter. Her legs were not totally underneath her. Here it is. Boom. See how she turned the chin right there. And you can just see the look right there on Roman's face. She's like, what, 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 what the heck was that? He tried to fight it off, but man. There's that first knockdown, and Roman right now, that, that beautiful right hand once again. And you can just see the look on her face. She's frustrated. She knows that she's not winning this fight right now, and she was in trouble. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Mergliana, steps in and calls a stop to our main event at one minute into round number one. For your winner, by K.O. Jean Masson Wong! All right. I'm standing by with Jean Masson Wong. Congratulations. That is a dominant victory right there. You ran through Gabrielle Roman, who's very, very tough, but it just seemed like you were so focused tonight. You were on point. You weren't missing any of your punches. So talk to me how you're feeling right now after this victory. I feel really good. I worked hard, and I think uh, I saw with again tonight. Now listen, it was just announced that Christine Faria will fight Heather Hardy at Mohegan Sun. That being said, 
What is your message to the champion, Christine Faria, and the challenger, Heather Hardy? Uh, but I think it's going to be time uh, for a championship fight. So uh, the next, I think, is the next step. Do you have anybody you want to thank, Jod? That was such a great performance. It's been a great run. Who do you want to thank? All my team, all my family, all my sp sponsor who uh, support me every day. Uh, thank you. I think you made your country proud here. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Chad Masson Wong. And so I, she's so impressive with her ability to fight those hard punches, but another impressive thing is after every fight, during every fight, before, in the middle, she's got this huge smile. You can tell she loves being out there, and that's what's impressive to me. A lot of fighters, they are mean mugging. They don't want to, you know, show emotion. She's having a blast out there, and you want to see that. Jean Masson Wong told us in our fighter meeting, I'm, I'm going to be ready to step back and then throw with power. She did that, and she also stepped in and threw with power. Two knockdowns to the knockout. In our main event of the evening, the winner by way of first round TKO, Jean Masson Wong defeats Gabriel Roman. Chris, our debut in Canada. This is country number six for BKFC. 10 fights, 10 finishes. We didn't go past three rounds. Sean, we never have anybody complain about too many knockouts. It hasn't happened in a while. We've had all knockouts, but man, these people came, they fought, they brought it the entire time. I'm so proud of them. That's what I told them before this thing started. Go out there and leave it all in the ring, and they all did. I think it's so important to emphasize that we take a lot of pride in BKFC, starting with our founder, our CEO, David Feldman, our COO, Dave Feldman Jr., our matchmaker, Nate Shook, our entire matchmaking team. There's no A side, B side. So we're seeing finishes, but we're seeing finishes in very competitive, very well-matched fights. Sean, when this sport first started, it was a little different. You were trying to get your feet where you were trying to understand how to match people up. There was a lot of experience. We're getting more experience. We're getting better from these trials. I think we're learning who's better and who to put against each other. These are all competitive fights. They don't end competitively sometimes, but that's because one person lands a good punch, lands a good shot, and it's just a phenomenal time. What we're seeing in this new BKFC Prospect Series is on the undercard and the mid card. These are literally fighters who have emerged, chosen by you, Nate Shook, our matchmaking team from the open tryouts, trying to earn a full contract in BKFC. But once we get to the business end of the card, specifically the co-main and the main, we're seeing established BKFC fighters. Jeremiah Riggs in his fourth BKFC fight, the outpouring of emotion and victory, taking out the previously undefeated in the sport of BK of Bare Knuckle, the Englishman Sonny Smith in round number one, and then Jad Masson Wong, now three and one in BKFC, getting the win of her life in our main event. Sean, it's just a beautiful recipe right there. We get these new people, we want everybody to see them and their development, watching the tryouts, and then we put on some really good high-level fighters that everybody wants to watch. People want to see Jeremiah Riggs. People want to see Jad Marsong Wong. So we put them in there to get the fans to watch, and I think it's paying dividends. Everybody's loving the Prospect Series, including myself. Chris, the month of March is absolutely loaded for BKFC. From Alberta to Florida, BKFC Fight Night Miami, March 15th. Then we return to Bulgaria at Arena Sofia, March 22nd, and back to New Mexico in Albuquerque, March 29th. Sean, that's just the fights we have. I also have tryouts coming up in between those times. Our April schedule stacked as well. North of London, Milton Keynes in the United Kingdom. That's April 6th. April 12th, Tampa, Florida. Salem, Virginia, April 20th. Knuckle Mania for our California debut. We will be in Los Angeles. April 27th, note the main event. Mike Perry versus Chiago Alves. Mike Perry versus Chiago Alves. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presented by Fucked Up Energy Drink in our debut in Canada. 10 fights, 10 finishes. Victories this evening for Max Sukalukchuk, Robert DeArnay, Tyler Tremblay, Hassan Al Hanim. Sam Polk, Chad Lucanis, Drew Stuvey, Stan Cermak, 
Jeremiah Riggs, and in our main event, John Masson Wall. For David Philbin, Chris Lytle, Cyrus Fees, Jeff Houston, Brian Sosha, and our entire crew, I'm Sean Wheelock. From the sold-out River Cree Resort Casino, thanks for watching BKFC Prospects. Edmonton.